Hello, everyone. It's McCall here, and welcome to the second episode of Star Trek Cerberus Station. If you're seeing this on the internet, congratulations. That means that I'm brave enough to actually face the wa the random watchers of the internet. No real shout-outs today. No real announcements. So let's um, get to the, cap or the commander's log today. Commander's log, start at 8235.5.4. After dealing with the fact that now we have a stowaway on station in Ensign Iral, I have done as any good uh, commander would do. <laughs> and, uh, got some sleep and took command while the captain was also sleeping. Um, our skeleton crew has done a fine job of keeping Deep Space 15 running while the first wave of Federation ships have dropped off several thousand of the Starfleet officers and civilians. That will be uh, the life of the station. I have to say, the silence on the station has been deafening, and having close to the amount of people this uh, thing can hold makes me happy, realizing that this is actually happening. On a more serious note, the USS Amara has brought a ship that's unknown by Federation logs into dock, and it's the first possible sign of life rather than us here in the Expanse. Since the ship is alien to us, I have ordered Master Chief Ember and Dr. Galen to put the ship on quarantine, just in case the ship may be carrying some sort of disease or some sort of life that we don't want getting out. End vlog. All right. So, uh, to set the scene, um, there have been there have been a uh, grand total of four transport ships that have entered the. Uh, Karsrai Nebula, each carrying about a thousand um, crewmen who have done the whole Warp 9 journey from Federation space out here. Needless to say, most of them have been uh, fairly, suffering due amounts of cabin fever and are eager to get to work. Uh, the USS Armara was the last one and has tracked it in a derelict ship. Now let's bring you over to here. So the ship itself is rough is a slightly larger than a Danube class runabout, uh, scale two, and looks fairly like a kind of like a submarine kind of thing. Uh, judging from the stanchions on its prow, it looks like at one point it may have been a solar sail vessel, although there is a ring of something pointing out the end or the rear that you have yet to determine what it may be for. There is a fairly large blast mark which may, which was at the airlock. And currently it is just left in tractor beam a fair distance outside the station while uh, security chief master or master chief Amber and the doctor decide what to do with it. Hey, welcome aboard, Captain. Now, would you guys like to discuss this in the conference room? Uh, discuss what exactly? Just for clarification. What to do with the ship. That is oh. Just... Um, sure, let's do a conference room. Conference yeah, room, right. yeah. Conference room it will be. I shall drop here. I believe that is everyone. Uh, per Peric has discovered... Peric... <laughs> Uh, Peric has discovered that his brother was on board one of the transport ships and is noticeably absent from the meetings. Hmm. So this right. is the ship that the Amara bought, brought in, correct? That's correct. Okay. Gotcha. And the, the the Amara has report no no sign of life, but they have not. They were in too much of a hurry to get here to actually investigate it, so they just figured they'd bring it to you to investigate. Hmm. We haven't had a chance to go aboard it ourselves, have we? Nope. And it's literally at dock or at station keeping now. Well. Uh. We had Peric here. I'd ask about its technological capabilities. Um, Lieutenant Barnett, have you been able to gain any insight on the matter? 
Lieutenant Barnett kind of, after looking into just dead or like negative space, snaps back to attention. Oh, um, uh, no, no, Captain, I have not had a chance to review the preliminary reports there, and I have not conducted a sensor scan. That was actually going up to first on my list today. Now, as he adds some information to a pad to do, I've already done the first. The first being? Oh, um, Master Chief Ember had me slated for some additional runs that were added to my schedule. I, um, to, uh, yeah, 0230, actually. Expected them a little earlier, I guess, but I maybe they it uploaded at a certain time. I, I don't know. Oh, I'm hearing Point you is, want to run even earlier? Well, we can arrange that. Oh, 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 400 is fine, Master Chief. <laughs> just look at you sideways and then just go back to punching numbers on my pad. <laughs> but uh, I... Barnett just looks haggard right now. <laughs> uh, Dr. Galen, have you been able to run any medical scans to see if there might be some sort of disease on board this ship that we should be worried about? Not a detailed scan, no. Preliminary scans show no life signs, of course, but to get a further analysis, I would like to board it. That or someone with an EV suit. Um, that can certainly be arranged, and I think that should be our highest priority. Uh, Master Chief Ember, if, would you be willing to lead this ex excursion? I mean... I am the logical choice after the doctor here. There's a rare disease that is able to survive a cornet's bloodstream. I mean, we run at, what, 125 compared to the rest of you that run below 100? Hmm. Do not count yourself immune. There are silicone-based viruses out there that could wreak havoc upon your system just as easily as any other, any other organic being. Nah, Bill's character. Plus, we get to work together some more. Oh, yeah, right. Wild. That. Uh, doc, have we ever considered actually getting a real doctor? Or Captain, have I we am? considered getting a real one? There's He's nothing wrong with real. this one. <laughs> I All concur right. with my XO here. He's got some pretty good uh, achievements under his belt. He's just as good as any of them. Right, until his hollow emitter gets damaged or is knocked offline, and then all of a sudden I don't have someone I can rely on when I need it. Alright, whatever. Uh, I'll Master go Chief, on. is that you lacking faith in our technology? I, it's a constant, sir. Uh, I've served on more than one ship that has had a, shall we say, technical glitch, which was not fun to deal with. Be well, speaking a little of as a... As someone who understands xenobiology, we're we're pretty squishy too. And any number of things can go wrong there. You have a fear of my programming being altered in such a way as to be harmful. Need I remind you that organics can also be altered in such ways. Brainwashing, reprogramming, and conditioning. Yes, it takes a little longer for this to occur, but it it still happens. Oh, no, no, no. There's no fear involved here. It's simply an inevitability. You will go rogue at one point. It is inevitable. And he kind of, and Crawford kind of gives Master Chief Ember kind of like a a look, a look that basically says like this conversation's over pertaining to yeah, holograms yeah, and know. such. All right. Well, you know. Now, uh <laughs> I am uh, other... ready to go aboard uh, at your order, Captain. Just let me know when you prefer to to, to uh, take place. Of course, and uh, as we found out uh, last week, we have a stowaway on this ship. Um, I've decided to let her... Wait, yeah, Errol was a her, just to clarify, yep, right? that's correct. Okay. Uh... I decided to let her have some uh, roaming of the station, mainly just astrometrics and engineering, but I wanted to 
have a quick conference with all of you to discuss what we should do about her in the future. We still need to set up communication with the foundation. Uh, we've sent it, but it'll take a while. So uh, this is more to see what we can do with her and see if we can set up a, well, a faster means of communication. That was if anybody has point. ideas. That was going to be my point to bring up, Captain, is that being out here on the edge of existence, it seems like, we need to have some form of faster communication than subspace uh, if anything were to happen. Unless we have a fleet here to help us, we don't know what's going to come through those transhub uh, gate, and we still don't know what's around the station in the surrounding expanse. Having a faster form of communication to get back to Starfleet for ships to get here as fast as they can via Warp 9 or Slipstream is a good idea. Um, so I was going to pose that question to our science officer to see if we can figure out uh, what we can do. Well, uh, Lieutenant Barnett, any ideas? Um, and you're welcome. I'm just... Uh... I'm sorry, what what are we doing again? Lieutenant, I'm are you considering quite relieving right? you of duty. <laughs> I just need slightly stronger caffeine. The replicators haven't quite gotten around yet. Eelens is going to lean forward and look at Barnett like, report to Secbay once this meeting's concluded. I second the doctor's motion. Hi, yes, sir. And I guess I'll, uh, I'll third it. I I have more than enough pips ordering me to uh so, yes I I can most certainly I can most certainly handle this. And if it, like insofar as the ship is concerned and just to meta this I actually did have audio go out so I am fluffing it as best as possible. Um okay. that in terms of uh, investigating the ship, I I'd, like I'd certainly be game for that. Uh, sorry, sorry. So at this point, he's just going to take a very large uh, swig. just a swig of the coffee that he has at the table. <laughs> I'm ready. Um. All right. All right. Well, uh, if anybody doesn't have any suggestions on what to do about our new f new score friend, then uh, Master Chief, you can go ahead and start getting a team ready to go onto that ship. And unless anybody has any questions for me, a uh, gentleman, you're dismissed. <laughs> um, as you get up and. Rami quickly appears, apologizes for the squeaking of the turbo lift in ops, and disappears again. Sorry, couldn't help myself with the dog <laughs> in the background. Oh, okay, okay. <laughs> uh, we are so uh, await. Sounds like we are preparing an away team to the derelict ship. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. So, am I correct in un in hearing that Galen, Ember, and Barnett are heading over? Mm -hmm. um, do mm -hmm. either. Um, Dalrum or Crawford wish to go or bring along a support character? Um, Does, I'll take uh, Nia, the uh, Trill Engineer. Okay. Um, I haven't looked at our all of our support characters to see. Yes. <clears throat> okay. Let me prepare the map. Where is the map? I made it. Or... I did not. Wow. Okay. I made a boo-boo. That's okay. <laughs> I can fix this real quick. While... Dalrum... gets his... chooses his character, I will prepare the map for you real quick. 
Alrighty. Done here. <clears throat> okay. I will take the Euphrosian uh, Ensign our, uh, Chronological Anomalies expert. Ah. Is it An Ia? Uh, Leah? Uh, Leah? Okay. Yeah. Uh, good choice. Okay. We shall prepare the background post haste. Get the crew. Okay, so uh, how are you getting to it? Are you just going to transport over, or will you be bringing a shuttle? Oh. Um, well, I'd say transport Galen from a shuttle onto it. Okay. And then, you know, he can just take a quick scan, make sure there's no viral infection or anything like that. Understood. And then, then Doc, once um, all clear... That's just my idea. I'm all for that. I like that idea because we can suit up for EVA suits if need be, if we have a uh, shuttle there. All yeah. right. Okay, so we shall bring the characters over to this map. My apologies. So we have... That was Nia, and that was which one? It was Malar. Uh the oh. ensign was it Lak L A K? Ah, Lak Ila. Okay. Ila, have pronounced that. And then we are bringing over Doctor Master Chief and Sullivan. Okay, the sh the shuttlecraft ride is fairly quick, understandably so. You are literally going not even 600 meters outside the station, but it's nice to have proximity. As you get closer to the ship, um, the you can tell that it has been obviously attacked and boarded from the outside. Um, where the airlock probably was has been replaced by um, a weapons f ah trace of weapons fire, in something has exploded inwards. There's a small amount of debris coming from it as not, most of it has either been displaced by warp or held in place with the existing tractor beam. Uh, the doctor beams over first. I will cut you over to this map. <coughs> okay, doctor. You are on board a ship that you can see it is a uh, fairly spacious interior. Actually, before we begin, do you want to take scans of the vessel from afar? I certainly vote yes. All yeah, right. That's, yeah. That makes sense. Uh, that would be an insight plus science, and I don't think I have stats yet for the runabout, which I should. Uh, so in the meantime, we'll just use these. Uh, someone can roll the slip near class. Um, which would I mean, be... if it's a standard runabout, it's probably an eight. Yeah, it sounds about right. Take it my sensor operations focus applies. That it would. And the runabout is no help. X. Runabout is no help. But there are two successes, which is definitely enough. Um, <clears throat> uh, the ship is very is uh, structurally sound, despite the beating it has taken in however it was boarded or attacked. Uh, it appears to be um, structurally reinforced for long uh, journeys at warp speed. The stanchions at the front uh, definitely were at some point a sail, and you're able to pick up pieces of rigging that have been uh, left intact, but most of it has sheared off at some point in its, this vessel's past. Uh, you, once again, you detect no life signs, uh, but you do detect a large amount of food stuff or other organic matter in the rear cargo bay. Um, from the amount of food there is, could we reasonably estimate like how many people this ship might hold? <clears throat> um, it looks like the 
assuming that these were a humanoid in both stature and uh, gluttony, mm-hmm. um, and assuming a non-perishable so- style of food, most likely this would have set people up for about three months. Alrighty. Um, all right, well, um, there's also a hole in the ship, you said, there that looked like, hole. uh, is there any way we can scan specifically that and see maybe if it's, like, from a weapon that we would recognize? Uh, sure, if, uh, you get a free question as science officer, correct? Uh, uh that would be will... Barnett, yeah. Oh, yeah. yes, I, I do get... Something for the obtaining, or I do get a free momentum for obtaining information when I succeed at a science test okay. or sensor test. So I'll go ahead and see. Um, that's uh, I'm not coming. Or questions aren't coming to mind right away, other than maybe just trying to discern relative age of the craft or how long it was. But let's stick with. Uh, let's stick with. Like trying to figure out whether we can recognize the weapons pattern uh, okay. or that. Um, the weapon appears to be a. The remnants appear to be uh, an energy signature, but not one that would be typically associated with phasers or disruptors. Rather, mm-hmm. it appears that uh, some sort of a high, uh, high energy plasma sort of burnt its way through the hull. Hmm. Based on the composition here, it would uh, I would guess, sir, that this was a Oh wait, you're playing one of the minor yeah, character. Like support character. Yeah. Okay. Am I the highest ranking person aside from the doctor? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> okay. But we also have a master chief, so be aware. Yeah. The, the whole enlisted thing last week. Anyway. Yeah. Um Huh. Seems like, aside from this, it's uh, things have a pretty good consistency with some high-energy plasma weaponry. It kind of reminds me a little bit of what some Romulan ships used in the past, although I can't match it to, uh, or I couldn't definitively say that, and obviously it, uh, it seems less likely that Romulans did this. Hmm. I'd hope they didn't do this. So Barnett's going to lose himself in thought. Could I use my physics focus and maybe come up with um, the age of the vessel? Uh, sure, that would require a new insight science with a uh, similar difficulty of two, please. And runabout can, uh, runabout can assist with uh, getting an under an eight. Oh, oh, that is uh, wow. two six. That's four successes. So yeah. two momentum. Runabout still says so now. Okay. Yeah, uh, the runabout appears to be a poorly configured. If only Peric wasn't busy catching up with his brother, he could happily assist. <clears throat> uh, let's see. So the ship is surprisingly old, um, hmm. judging from the. Um, degradation of its uh, of its material. Uh, standard sort of dura- sort of looks like um, duranium hull plating. Um, more comparison to the old NX classes where the hulls were polarized instead of having a proper shield j- to protect it from outside forces. <clears throat> uh, the ship that uh, the ship structure indicates that it is could be anywhere from 100 to 150 years old. And it has done a great deal of traveling in its time. You can see all sorts of microscores all over its body from where things scraped against it while traveling at high warp in high warp speed. I will uh, communicate that with Lieutenant Barnett if he is not so lost in thought. Just snap me back to uh, reality. Huh. Got here for a little while. I either had to abandon ship here. That is something we must determine, although with it being this age of 
between 100 and 150 years old, there's a decent amount of range that it could have come from, especially depending on where it's going from and how fast it was actually able to go. We found the remnants of the solar rigging. I'm assuming that the solar rigging was used to get it into a warp speed and then something else was able to maintain its warp. I that that would make sense. I understood that uh, I have this vague memory of a history text I'd read about some of the old Bajoran sails and how they or how far some of them had made it on based under similar premise of course. One only knows how long they've been hovering out here or if if there are any survivors, whether they've uh, whether they made it back home or whether they're just certainly long dead in all likelihood. Well, uh, let's see. I suppose, Doctor, uh, this is probably about as secure as we can discern. There's nothing. Uh, there doesn't really seem to be anything on the ship that would pose any issue to your uh, to your integrity as a hologram so we could probably go ahead and beam you aboard sounds good i am eager to see if our sensors are accurate or if there's something that we can't detect very well (coughs) so uh the doctor beams on board the ship uh fairly flawless transport especially close range um Doctor, you materialize on board the vessel, and it is pretty much as the sensors had decreed it. Uh, Everything in here is dead. No one's bothered to put fresh atmosphere into here, so everything is sort of just tumbling around a little bit in zero-G. It's a very spacious interior. Um, Similar... uh, It looks larger on the inside than that of your run... the runabouts that I've been comparing it to. Uh, it seems that there's uh, no one bothered putting things like, you know, structural insulation on the inside to make it a comfortable place. It's very bare bones. Uh, there are several consoles on both sides of the ship, as well as a navigation console up front. Um, there's no chairs to be seen. And looking around, you can quickly understand why. Uh, there are three bodies. Um, they are. Their top half appears to be humanoid, and their bottom half appears to be a scorpion. Uh, We are talking a fairly large size scorpion type creature. Um, Their width would be about uh, three feet wide, and their length would be six feet long. They would have a fairly large tail that could end in a uh, stinger. However, most have been uh, removed and replaced with what appears to be some sort of Uh, ceremonial uh, markings or banners. Um, uh, The shells are... The the exoskeletons of the scorpions are all of different colors. Uh, One is orange, one is blue, and one is black. The black one appears to have been the driver as he is occupying... or as he is occupying the cockpit station. Um, however, each th- th- uh, three of them, their heads are completely missing. And there is signs of a firefight within the ship. Uh, I want to scan them to see how long they have ex- been expired. All right. Uh, Insight Medical, please. Uh, that would be a difficulty one, I should say. All right. Uh, let's see. Biology, xenobiology. Yeah. Yeah. Ooh. And that's a three, so you get two more momentum. <clears throat> uh, surprisingly, um, unlike the ship, these um, creatures appear to have. Um, given the general desiccation of being trapped in zero G a- or zero atmosphere conditions, it's hard to really gain a 
precise de ah, precise timeline of their death, but you imagine that these poor souls haven't been dead for any longer than five or six months. Okay. Um, I'm going to go poke at the console. Um... I'm gonna establish a community like an open line to the shuttle. Okay. Uh, and also a open connection with my tricorder to the shuttle as well. Okay. Well, I have come across three deceased individuals beheaded uh, from combat. Uh, they are almost humanoid with insectoid qualities. I'm attempting to ascertain their computer systems. If one of you could read the messages and recordings I'm sending from my tricorder to the shuttle, so we can establish proper air cycling and gravity. That would be much appreciated. Understood, Doctor. Uh, as you go to activate the computer, Doctor, um, there is... It's not coming to life. It appears that there's currently no power. Just poke it a couple times, like hmm. it lets out a sad warble. Like, well, I have a faith in my engineering skills to repair holographic emitters, and myself, I do not believe I'm qualified for ship operations. Uh, I'm just going to scan the atmosphere for any bacteria, vi viral infection, anything that might be harmful to the crew. Okay. Um, this will be an insight medical and difficulty of three. Uh, I have... To do... Uh, viral infection. That would count. Is it okay if I spend a momentum to get an extra dice? Go for it. Sure. Yeah. <clears throat> Oof. All right. Mm. Um, you give the uh, uh, you walk up and down the uh, main areas of the ship, and you're not finding any source or any sign of bacterial or viral infection. Okay. As far as I can read, I'm getting the all clear. Uh, do follow proper pro uh, proper protocol, though. If you have any concerns about beaming over, even with an EVA suit, please remain on the shuttle. Well, Doctor, if you are reasonably confident that something at least won't get over a VA, or get through an EVA suit, then I think that the investigation is warranted. Also, is that transmit? Uh, we're not receiving a transmission as of yet. Are you having any success with their computer system? Their systems are down. I would like to see if we could restore them, maybe play a log, maybe find information of the physiology within their computer banks. Specialist? Yes. Yes, Lieutenant. Oh. <clears throat> Looks like we may have some need for your services, so hope you're ready to get into some alien technology and finish getting into an EVA suit. He's already about halfway into it. Okay. I'm going to send over Specialist Nia, and we will... Um, we can get power going on there. Excellent. Right. Uh, uh, as a point of order, Ember will be going over just to in-person inspect the bodies. That makes perfect sense. Okay. So while while we're waiting for that, their game's gonna float them on over into a, one area. Okay. Are you, um are you going to stick them back in the cargo bay, the cockpit, or just sort of tuck them away in the center area where people seem to do operation stuff? I'll tuck them away in the operations area. I'll I'll if I'll try and find a. Is there like a blanket or a tarp I can find? Uh yes, actually, in the back. Uh, in the cargo bay, without having to go through too much stuff, you do find several uh, tarps. Yeah, I'll, I'll use it to cover them. All right. All right. As you cover them up, uh, Ensign Lack Ila and Master Chief Ember transport on board in full EVA uh, suit. That'd be me and me. Yeah. Yeah, the, the trail. Oh, I'm sorry. I mixed up. So. That's Sharon... my, 
My fault for not uh, clarifying there. Ah. Okay, Jeronia and Master Chief Ember are beaming over. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> All right. Um, Master Chief, your security training indicates that, uh, tells you that the firefight happened very quickly um, as the uh, various um, scorch marks from where an energy weapon impacted on the wall is all pretty much one-sided. Um, so someone showed up or someone's showed up, sprayed the area with fire, and didn't really get a chance to get shot at in return. All right. Uh, what concerns me the most is I want to know, uh, inspecting the bodies, I mean, does it look like someone bit the head off? Did they saw it off? Did they, was it a clean slice? Okay. Um, I th that should be an insight security, I believe. Uh, mm -hmm. Difficulty of two. And if anyone else wants to assist, they can do so with either medicine or security. Sounds like fifth. your bag there, Galen. Well, I uh, got us one momentum. Yep, that's one momentum already. Uh, insight medicine, you said? Insight security. Uh, yep, yeah. insight security or insight medicine. And it's just one dice for the assist. Mm -hmm. Correct. Uh, do, 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 do. do I get a focus? Uh, yes, focuses apply for assistances. All right, uh, uh, biology, xenobiology, anatomy. Xeno yeah, xenobiology or anatomy. And that's another two successes, so three successes in total, so three momentum. Mm -hmm. Yay, Ken. Uh, and we're at max already. I I'm Actually, just going to well. do something to Ember and just lean over. It's like, see, if I were to do it, I would do it like this. And he just motion with his hand across the, uh, <laughs> the slice. And just look at her. Yeah, you know, as much crap as I get about you going rogue one day. Yeah, you don't make those kind of jokes and not go rogue. <laughs> um, what is int so what's interesting about the head is it doesn't look like it's been sawed off or even vaporized um, judging from the um, what's from the cauterization wounds around the neck something melted their heads off or blew them apart with a very close high energy type it's hard to say grenade but some sort of very low area of very low area, high yield energy. Could this have been done at point blank range? Most definitely. I believe this was personal, judging by the intensity of this. I mean, what was your first clue? Um, the fact that their heads are completely vaporized off their body, but not the rest of them. Our weapons are designed to disintegrate, if necessary. I was being sarcastic, Doctor. Of course, it's either personal or that these were victims of a hunt. There is no other reason for this barbaricness. If it was a hunt, their bodies wouldn't be here. Not necessarily. Some trophy hunters like to take heads. Others like to take tails. Others take horns. It's really just whatever's with the hunter. Uh, Jaren, while they're busy poking at bodies, you're poking at the computer. Yeah. Um, roll me an insight engineering, please, with a difficulty of one. Okay. And I believe you have computers, which would be a good focus. Yeah. Um, and I believe this is our second time activating him. Um, nope, I, this, I don't believe he was here the first time, was he? Yeah, uh, we took oh. him on to the Klingon ship. Ah, yes, that's right, he was. So yes, this is the second time activating him, so you may add uh, to his uh, talents, disciplines, etc. as you wish. Yeah. Um, I'm going to upgrade his insight by one, so we'll make that a nine. Okay. So, it's the insight engineering. Very nice. Alrighty. Um, so, A, the computer system is completely dead. Uh, B, because the reactor to this thing is completely dead. C, because this thing appears to get power from the solar sails, which have been ripped off. 
Hmm. Uh, it, it would appear from your very quick analysis that uh, this thing uses uh, uses the solar sail both as a source of momentum and a source of power. And hmm. it would charge the batteries, which then will last the ship until it reaches its destination, where it will recharge again. Huh. Uh, Specialist Mia to Master Chief Ember. This is Ember. Go ahead. Uh, it would appear that this ship is powered entirely by the solar sails. Um... Now that they're gone, we can't really restore power to the ship. And there's a pause, and after a moment I say, You did bring a spare power cell, right? Uh, um, yes, I, uh, I, I might have swept it on the shuttle. One second. <laughs> uh, Mia to Barnett, want to beam over? Uh... I mean, yeah, I can beam you over. I was actually going to ask Specialist, uh, did you need the power cell? And he kind of, there's, a, there's a very slight pause that tells you what you need to know. Goodbye, Specialist. <laughs> Beaming one over. Galen is just fine because his communication line is still left open. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, I, I assume this is just an open shared comm link between the team. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. All right, uh, rigging everything up will be uh, control plus engineering with a difficulty of two, since this is an alien system. All righty. Um, he does not. And folks can assist if they wish. Uh, yeah, because yeah, computers wouldn't be a focus here. Uh, no. Um, I'll take momentum so I have an extra dice. Mm -hmm. Oh, wow. That is three successes, so you get that momentum right back. Alrighty. Okay, we're having too many successes. We're going to die <laughs> at the end of this. I should so convert some of the... I'm just adding silently to threat here. I wish I could. Oh, well. <laughs> um, the It's a bit hard going. It takes a little longer and a few uh, accidental sparks as you do so. Uh, trying to figure out which side is positive and negative on an alien piece of engineering without standard labels is surprisingly difficult but you eventually get everything uh you plug it into the uh pilot's console and half of the ship sort of th uh, thrums to life with a uh, sort of a sick sound of a sort of like a dying car if a dying car engine it just sort of chugs a bit mm -hmm. it's not a lot of power but it's enough okay all right, looks like we've got a partial power. Uh, I'm going to see if I can get any logs from this thing. Right. Uh, that would definitely... That would be a either control or inside computers. Difficulty of two. All right. Actually, I'm, and I'm going to spend threat here because I have some to increase the critical range 19 to 20. Okay. Um, <clears throat> what I know... Would I be able to tell if there are any communi any not uh, like security measures in place, or is it just kind of open? It um, at casual glance, everything appears to be open and unlocked. Okay. Uh, before I try, I would like to get like see if there are any security measures because he does have a focus in firewalls. Ooh, good question. Okay, so sec security systems check. Mm hmm. That would uh, be uh, control uh, engineering. Uh, actually, insight. Ah, insight engineering difficulty of right. two, just because alien computer systems. Yeah. But that threat still is going to be 1920. Yep. Uh, yeah, I'll okay. uh, momentum for third dice. Um. While this is getting sussed out, could I actually um, do this results? Yeah. Okay. Um, that's a lot oh, of successes. Boy. So, yeah. yeah. 
Sorry, I'll get right back to you, Barnett. Um, so you determined that there is no security um, on the ship. It just seems to be a very open, trusting system. And back to you, Barnett. What were you going to ask? I want to check if this is a good application of the or of a particular talent. So I have testing a theory, mm -hmm. which, as it says here, um, written it down into slight shorthand for my sheet. Uh, when attempting a task using engineering or science, you may roll an additional d20 so long as you succeeded in a previous task covering the same scientific or technological field earlier in the adventure. Um, basically, I want to do a bit more analysis of the hull to see if I can, uh, or like analysis of the ship in general, see if I can learn anything more about that, um, start, or like try to identify if there are particular races that might have been in Starfleet's database that or okay. sticks to particular regions of the galaxy. Okay. Uh, yep, yeah, uh, that's a good reason, or that's a good place to apply the, the talent. Okay. Um, so that would be a difficulty of two. All right. And reason science, I take it? Reason science, yep. Yeah. Right. Would Eva be able to assist between astronomical phenomena and chronological anomalies as focuses? Ooh. Astronomical phenomenon would work quite well. Okay. I also have a sensor oper or my sensor operations focus again, of course. Yep. What are we rolling? Oh. Insight? Uh, in uh, insight, or sorry, reason science. Reason science. And I think this is just a. Oh wait, no. I may roll an additional yeah. d20. All right. So that's three d20, and this, and that is a grand total of five successes. So you're and already I should have capped spent on momentum. momentum. Yep. Yeah, uh, you're already capped on momentum, so if you want to ask any further questions, you're welcome to do so. Okay. Uh, so the grand to um, the reason the ship is so old is it's actually been in operations, in operating service for this long. Um, you can see uh, residue on its hull from where it's traveled through nebula of all ma of several makes and eh, several types. It's passed by several star systems. It's entered. Uh, atmosphere of all sorts of different types of planets, mostly Class M, but you do detect uh, residue from Class Ys, uh, the occasional Class T, and an, a few uh, Class J supergiants. Um, in fact, it's traveled so f so far and so long, it's very difficult to figure out where home might have been for this thing. Um, one side of the ship, the starboard side, uh, so the side that does not have the hole blown in it um, has been scoured with um, a heavy dosage of radiation from a um, uh, from a neutron star. Um, this does correlate with the record that you got from the USS Amara saying that it had discovered this ship as it was being as it was being drawn into the neutron star. Okay, so, um, well, obviously, with as far and wide as it's been, I can't. There isn't necessarily a telltale um, the sort of different planetary uh, or, like signatures left by different bits of atmosphere or nebulae. Um, let's see, and we know that. The, the hull style is roughly, or it's closer in some ways to 22nd century styles of engineering. Um, I guess since I have all, or since there's all this surplus momentum just kind of floating around right at the moment, um, well, first I'll use my free uh, momentum 
anything particularly unique about the materials, the alloys used in construction that would maybe be less common okay. in shipbuilding? The there is a great deal of a silicate based material making up the ship's um, interior structures. Not so much the superstructure, where you know su- stuff has to be hardened against the void of space and all of its radiation, etc. Uh, but the internal structure, where it's slightly less important, is appears to be a great deal of either hardened stone. Uh, or some sort of silicate metal alloy, uh, indicating a that this thing probably hailed from a desert type homeworld. Fascinating. Yeah. One of the uh, well, oh, thinking here. Let's see. Uh, while you're thinking, if um, I'll let you come back and ask the questions with the momentum as we move on with Jaren. Okay, sounds good. Uh, uh, Jaren, uh, you're you're beginning to activate the computer system, correct? Correct. Okay, so um, that will be since you've powered it up and you've already determined that there's no firewalls in place. Um, I will give uh, that will be an in. Um, let's see. Let's run Control plus Engineering, please. All right. And this will be a difficulty of two, because right. despite everything you've tried, your translator is just not understanding this interface. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'd assume computer's focus would apply here again? Absolutely. Uh, take a momentum for an extra dice. All right. Uh, so you tap away at th- that is not enough successes, hmm. and I will allow I will allow that to succeed with threat if you let me take threat. Yeah, sure, go ahead. Excellent. <laughs> okay, it takes a bit more effort than you had thought. Uh, turns out that red is the um, affirmative color in this species language rather than green. But you've hmm. managed to pick up several things, including a very, uh, including recent travel logs, um, something about its home system known as that identifies itself as Arkenfall, hmm. <clears throat> and um, fairly recent logs. It will take a little while for your translator translation matrix to ac- translate through most of it, but you're fairly sure that this is some sort of trade vessel. Hmm. Uh, and looking at the technology, is it since you said that the hull is comparable to like 22nd century Starfleet ships, mm-hmm. is the technology about the same or is it on par with our current technology? It is definitely on par with, or definitely on par with Enterprise level. So mid 22nd century. Okay. <clears throat> Uh, you also are... Uh, no, I, I let you succeed, so I'm not going to give you... Okay. Uh, yeah, so you have a recent, at least the last year's worth of trading trade routes, so what appear to be logs. Uh, you also get, you also pull the crew manifest, and huh. uh, you some through your very quickly uh, ma- translation matrix, uh, these creatures identify themselves as uh, the Scorpi Enclave. Huh. Interesting. Um, Specialist Nia to Dr. Galen? He's right next to you, so... Oh. (laughs) Hi. That's right, we're on the bridge. That's right, I'm smart. It's a very small (laughs) ship. Yeah. Uh, Right behind you. (laughs) It appears that these people are called the Scorpi, or as they're more widely known, the Scorpi Enclave. Um, There's some information here that might be helpful, but I think most of what I found would be 
better off being sent back to the shuttle so it can be more thoroughly translated. Very well. Why do you need to call me? I'm a doctor, not a portable transmitter. Because well, he's secretly plotting to overthrow with you, again. <laughs> he just gives you a look of, like, surprise. I was just like, just wanted him to know what they were. Master Chief, let's keep conspiracy theories off this channel, thank you. <sighs> yes, sir. <laughs> uh, um, Barnett, do you have any questions that you wish to ask? Um... I, I just have this voice in my head that's feeding me excellent ideas. Do we have any records of desert planets that might have a similar mineral composition or something that, or like anything that we've mapped um, in okay. relative known or explored space? Understood. Um, within this sector of space, it's far too recently uh, opened. And there's been no thorough uh, stellar or planetary cartography that's been taking place yet. Uh, so you don't have a good answer for that. I got something to do later in Astrometrics. Yes, you do. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's see. Um, other than that... Um, I suppose I let's see and think if there's continuing with the hull analysis um, I'm wondering if I can do just a little bit more to see if there's like uh, any get see if there's anything more specific in terms of uh, starfleet records with the with some sort of similar to it, like basically do i recognize any particularly uh, noticeable features in the weapon signatures the uh, or in the high energy plasma okay uh let's see <clears throat> the type of weapons that are used in this um in this ah, in this high energy plasma, it's not something that is commonly used because it is a very reactive type of weaponry. Um, it is very high risk to actually get it to uh, fire without causing it to potentially destroy the uh, ship's weapon system in the process. Uh, controlling this uh, type of chemical reaction requires a very delicate balance of stasis uh, stasis fields and containers before um, before the two components typically kept inert uh, will merge and then cause a violent explosion. Uh, Starfleet and even the Klingons don't dabble in this sort of stuff for their weaponry. Okay. So, obviously beyond the beyond the what I would assume is common knowledge at this point that Romulans have used in the past. It's yeah. uh, it you know, doesn't match to anyone else, or no one else is daft enough to try and shoot uh, molten plasma, basically. Pretty much. Or not that I'd recognize. Okay, yeah, that that was more like the thrust of that. Understood. I cannot think of anything else right now, so um, Very well. find a go um, on. Okay. Uh, crew on the ship, anything else you'd like to look at? Hmm. There's all that food stuff in the back that hasn't yet been explored. It's <laughs> probably just, you know, boring stuff, but it's there. Um, let's see. You've looked at the computers. There's the oh. giant hole in the ship. And there's the bodies. Yeah, Galen will go take a look at the food. Um, <laughs> medical purposes, see again if there's anything that could be harmful to anyone on the station if they were to try to ingest it. All right. Um, this would be another uh, insight medical with a difficulty of three. And I'm going to spend some threat and bring the critical range um, 18 to 20. 
Uh, so I want to focus this to to uh, toxicology and viral infection possibly apply. Yep. Either one of those would work. Cool. That's going to trigger my purposeful holograms. I get three dice. Two more focuses are applied. Yeah. Woohoo! All right, that is three successes. <clears throat> uh, at first glance, everything in here appears to be some sort of trade good or food for the crew. Uh, there's all sorts of cultural statues, knickknacks, um, that you're unable to really identify. Uh, a few uh, common use tools, such as tricorders, uh, sonic screwdrivers, regular screwdrivers, <clears throat> uh, a few uh, replacement components for some of the ship's computers, just in case, and uh, three months' worth of non-perishable food, typically taking the form of uh, jerky meat, uh, dehydrated uh, fruits, vegetables, um, some, some form of very hardened uh, bread-like substance. But a lot of it is coated in some sort of fungus spore that you're not able to fully identify. Hmm. All right. Then I'm going to step out of the cargo bay, and I am going to start scanning for more of the spore. Okay. Uh, now that you know what you're looking for, that would be another Insight Medicine difficulty 2. Uh, do gain toxicology, viral infection. That would be a, that would work. Oh, can I give you a momentum to pay that off? Yeah, you can do that. So that is two. That is the two successes you need, and you've negated the critical with momentum. <laughs> one or two momentum paid off. Two. Yeah. Two. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> It's fungus, guys. I don't want a, uh, what do you call it, Last of Us issue happening on the station. <laughs> we appreciate that. There are several sp um, fungal spores. Uh, most of it appears to be dead. Uh, just dead cells floating in zero G. However, some of them do appear to either have been in a hibernative state or have just somehow survived. And you can see that they are slowly starting to accrue on um, the surfaces of the EVA suits and your mobile emitter. Right, I'm going to transmit this information to the shuttle and to the personnel on the station to add this into the biomatter filter for the transporters. It's like, everyone, we're going to be following proper protocol on this. As of now, we have contaminants on us. We will be moving back to the shuttle. When we're departing, and then we'll be beaming into decontamination, all of us. Uh, and uh, at, as as um the communication jumps, just as your uh, console uh, taps to life, uh, we are going to quickly jump back to the station, and this is going to count as a scene change. Okay. So, Captain. Minus one. Uh, Captain and Commander, you are both in ops, and I believe this is the first time folks are going to see our final ops center. Ooh, so we'll get there. Oh boy! Dun, dun, dun. Ooh. Oh, 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 oh! This is beautiful. Holy crap! That, that's okay. so pretty. Oh yeah! <laughs> yeah. Major shout out to Falk, who really came through and bringing a really crummy 2D Photoshop I made in an hour to this. So. I just want to say, fuck yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> wow. I forgot this is recorded. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you didn't really say it, so... <laughs> I think the FCC won't be coming after us. <laughs> I love it. I love the red trim on everything. Oh, it's so good. Yeah. Oh, beautiful. Okay. Okay. So, there is a... It's fairly quiet as uh, the two of the captain and the commander are pacing around, just keep trying to keep busy, waiting to hear back from the um, f from the crew who is currently look checking out the shuttle. Uh, all of a sudden, your new uh, fleet control officer, Lieutenant Derval, uh, pipes up. 
Captain, Commander, I am detecting a vessel entering the nebula. It does not match any that are that is on Starfleet records. On uh, screen, Lieutenant. <laughs> on screen. So the vessel is pulls up and looks like this. It is a class four sized vessel. <clears throat> Um, brimming with all sorts of weaponry. Its weapons are armed, and it is you can see it actively making a sort of a ping-type sensor. Uh, and you said it was going into the nebula? It has entered the nebula and is coming towards the station. Okay. I am not seeing this. It's uh, over in front of Darval. Yeah. Oh, there we go. I guess my question from a Nia perspective, uh, can the shuttle and the people that are on this derelict ship see this? No, not right now. Your all of your the shuttle or the the uh, station sensors are just far more powerful than those of the runabout. So mm-hmm. the station's currently seeing this first. Okay. As it gets closer, the shuttle folks will definitely begin to see this. Alright. It... <sighs> Captain, um, I think we're about to get a little surprise visitor. Yeah. Um, Lieutenant v- Darval send communications to the runabout, if you can, the crew on that shuttle, and uh, send hailing frequencies to the vessel. I'm going to uh, move to a tactical station. Very well. And I think it's safe to say that we're probably going on red alert. Okay. Uh, station sounds red alert. Uh, Lieutenant Sullivan Barnett, um, you have received a communication from the station that an unknown vessel has entered the nebula. I'm going to immediately try to hail uh, Station Ops. The Hollow Center uh, pings to life and displays a rather high-definition, larger-than-life holographic head of Lieutenant Sullivan Barnett. Well, to, uh, I, oh, go ahead, Lieutenant. Uh, shuttle to uh, shuttle to Cerberus Station. Uh, Cerberus Actual. Everything okay over there? Uh, it appears that we've encountered an unknown vessel. Its weapons are charged, and it's heading right towards us. So, uh, if you can get the crew from the vessel back onto the shuttle and get back here as quickly as you can. Yes, hey, sir. Sir, I feel it's pertinent to note we've. Uh, our analysis is partly underway. Um, one important fact, the assailants on this ship may have used a plasma-based weaponry to basically burn through the hull. Um, so if these are the same people, or if it's just coincidence, or somebody uh, decided we were throwing a housewarming party and didn't tell us, but uh, suffice to say, I thought you should know. Thank you, Lieutenant. Burn it out. Captain, I'm going to extend the shields around the shuttle, see if I can buy them a little bit more time. Do it, number one. Uh, Lieutenant Darval, open hailing frequencies. Yes, sir. Hailing frequencies are open, Captain. Unknown vessel. This is Captain Crawford of the Federation Star Station Deep Space 15. State your reason for being here. There's a brief period of silence as all of a sudden this appears not on the GM layer, but in actual layer. Okay. It speaks in a bit of a garbled language while the Universal Translator attempts to identify and patch the language. Charm all of the Vitars Imperial vessel Kalar. 
You are, you are, har I must warn you that you are harvesting, or that you are in possession of a very dangerous biological weapon that we have been attempting to exterminate. Stand aside and we shall perform extermination. As, as they do so, uh, their ship parks roughly uh, 100 kilometers off the station's starboard section. And it begins bombarding the station with uh, high-intensity scans. Okay. <laughs> scans, not weaponry. Scans. Yeah, I was about to be like, okay, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> Captain, they're trying to get through the shields with scanning. Uh, it's really high-intensity. I don't know how long the shields can hold. <sighs> I'm going to continuously uh remodulate the shields as much as I can. Okay, uh, yeah. if you're going to hamper them, this is going to be a jamming test, I believe. Which is such a rare check for me that I don't recall what it is. Um, so, I'm I think going to call... the check is like control security? Maybe? Yeah, that sounds right. Control security, let's say, and the station will assist with uh, sensor security. Okay. Actually, sensor... Uh, no, comms, the sensor, or the station will assist with comms and security. Comms and security, got it. Would my tactical systems focus come into play here? I would say yes. This will be uh, difficulty of uh, difficulty of three. And we have an, so an we assist have one, from the station. One from the station. <clears throat> and... Oh, for oh boy. future reference, signal jamming is on page 224. Uh, might want to read it over because uh, it does make a difference here. All right, let's double check that. Thank you for that. If I apologize because I am still very new to these rules. Oh, I think I've used At signal least... jamming maybe all of twice this entire time I've GM, so it's very yeah. easy to forget. Now, G. Was 224, you say? Yep. All right. <laughs> Signal jamming. Communications officer. Ah, it would have been control engineering. I don't think that would have made too much of a difference. Ships, communication security, fine. Ah, okay. Um, and the character chooses difficulty one, two, or three success. Ah. I apologize. I was treating this as a standard thing. Okay. I mean, you know, we could do yeah. it your way. I'm just saying yeah. that, you know... Good to know for the future. Yeah. All right. Um, in As we play the dice, how they roll. Uh, sadly, the uh, you, while you do succeed in... Uh, actually, no, I set difficulty three. You so difficulty you were not, three. Yeah, you were not able to successfully um, deter... Uh, deter them. In fact, your complication has sort of allowed them precisely the location of the shuttle, as it immediately veers around the station and starts diving at the shuttle to attempt to, attempt to tractor beam it. Ooh. Sir, um, they're trying to get to the shuttle. Fire warning shots, Commander Dolan. Aye, sir. Okay. So, are you firing phasers or torpedoes? We'll send a few phaser warning shots. Okay. The, uh, firing a phaser would be a difficulty two. And that would be a uh, control plus security. And the ships or the station will assist with weapon security. I'm going to give you a threat for a third die. Okay, I'll take that threat. Okay, that is what you need. Uh, you fire a phaser directly across their back. Actually, let's let the station roll. See if you get momentum from that. Oh, and I'm going to re-roll that zero with my bold security. See if ah. I can get. And it's weapon security for the station? Correct. Nope. Okay, so that's one momentum. <clears throat> and you place the phaser beam so cl 
uh, so precisely between the ship and the runabout, uh, and the ship, or the cruiser, comes to a halt. And now they are hailing the station. On screen. Deep Space 15, you do not understand what we are trying to accomplish here. If we are able to exterminate this plague, when we are a, we will be able to save your station and your crew's lives. Uh, out of character, I'm double-checking. They were trying to tractor beam our shuttle, correct? Yep. Well, and they were trying to program are... both, both shuttles in the wide tractor beam, but you were the active shuttle, so yeah, they were coming at you with a tractor beam. Okay. Well, that shuttle is ours. Uh, remind me his name again. Uh, Charmal. Charmal, okay. Well, that shuttle is ours, Charmal, and if there is a disease on this that somehow has infected our shuttle, we can properly quarantine ourselves and... Our doctor is quite an accomplished individual. I'm sure he can figure out a cure for this plague. It's hard to understand what he looks like as he, or his facial expressions as he's wearing a very shiny helmet. As he, the ship powers its weapons down. And Darv, Darval confirms that. Captain, perhaps we should perhaps we should meet. I may have been too harsh in my opening negotiation tactics. I wish to show you what this thing has done to our planet, as well as perhaps meet on better terms than firing weapons at one another. Uh, very well. Uh, feel free to. Bring yourself in. Are there any other diplomats on your ship, Charmal? We are not a diplomatic species. I will come with some bodyguards. Alrighty. Uh, I assume we'll probably just meet them in a transporter room of some sort. Mm. Or you can you either you can beam them over, or you can tell D Lieutenant Derval to send them coordinates to the shuttle bay. Um, I'm going to have them transport over, because in the case that they're hostile, uh, I do not want this entire ship boarding. Okay. So, yeah. Okay, so we go to... Okay, so while they do this, what does the shuttlecraft folks do? So, okay. I had a very important question. Absolutely. Um, so we were in EV suits, and mm -hmm. to our knowledge, the EV suits were contaminated, as was Galen's uh, hollow emitter. Correct. So if we beam out of the EV suits, we're fine. It's only when we expose ourselves to the atmosphere or the conditions on the outside of the EV suits that we have problems, yes? That would be a logical conclusion, yes. Okay. Then, on hearing that she is needed in a tactical position, uh, Ember is going to confer with the doctor very quickly and say, Doctor, give it to me straight. Have they gotten through the EV suits, or can I literally beam out of my suit to ops or whatever the captain needs me? Uh, no one. They could have breached any of the sealants. We don't know yet. We need to be in decon to do a full examination. And uh, point of order, Doctor, I thought you said we were safe. Why are we finding this out now? New life forms, new bacteria. Not every sensor sweep's going to pick it up on the first scan. Mm. All the... <clears throat> this is happening, Barnett's going to say, All right, I've just spoke... Uh, presuming that this is all going concurrently with the other scene. Mm -hmm. Um everyone uh, st er, station has identified a potentially hostile ship uh, specialists go ahead and transfer over those logs and just uh, and everyone stand by to beam over don't worry about bringing anything that isn't strictly necessary 
uh, implied in this case. Um, doctor, uh, are you confident that the transporter filters can negate these spores that have accumulated on your suits? Negative. It is a new spiral strain. It's an infection that I have not seen. It could incubate or hide. It is unknown. There have been cases where bacteria have gone through the bio filters as well. Understood. Well, we will go ahead and suit up for EV here and try to pull in a little bit closer to the station, just in uh, you know, in case they, uh, in case they get any ideas or if they are the people that had um, left this ship in the shape that it was in. I'd rather put some distance between them. One thing I'd say to do is establish a level 10 force field around the cockpit. Good thinking, Doctor. And since uh, I believe that Sin Ilya is with me, I'm going to motion to him to like take it or bring up any components of their EV suit and join me second chair in the runabout. Uh, we're uh, still within. Wanna... Oops, sorry. Uh, Jim, we're within like transmission range, easy transmission range of the station, right? Very much so, yes. Excellent. I'm just going to look to Ember and uh, smile and is like, please keep this safe. And I'm going to transfer my program back to the station. <laughs> <laughs> That's so good. <laughs> good okay. and evil. Uh, throwing up level, uh, we'll throw up a level ten force field on the shuttle. Though, if there's any rolls we need to make, GM, let us know. And um, no, I'll just say that you do. Do we want to do the same for transferring the uh, ship's logs, or I'm going to say that that's fairly this. If if I had, if you were lacking in momentum, I'd make it like a zero task. But you have a decent amount of momentum, so it it just goes through. Okay, then in that case, I will throw up the force field, beam them to the back compartment, or basically okay. where they can be all settled in. And I, for one, am also uh, am just in case the force field fails or something like that. I'm getting the rest of my EV suit on before they beam over. A wise precaution. Do I That's have a medical staff yet? Yes, you do. Um, the support character that we made for the anesthesiologist has shown up, <laughs> as well as a group of medical trainees. Uh, fresh from Star... Uh, they are performing their practicum for Starfleet Medical. Oh, they so must they love four- me. <laughs> yeah, they're fourth-year uh, students. Uh, you will be teaching them. There will also be a head nurse whom I admit I haven't created a character for yet. But yes, you have a staff. Can the head nurse be named Miss Tessmacher? I don't know that reference, but I don't see why not. Superman, Lex Luthor's assistant. Oh, okay. <laughs> Fair enough. Um, okay, so lots of pieces hap- happening at once. Um, so you, Galen has now moved to the infirmary. Correct? Oh, yes. All right. well, I moved to the uh, decontamination room. Ah, yes, good plan. The uh, Ember and Nia have moved into the uh, runabout's rear section, along with Galen's... uh, Hollow emitter. Yes, hollow emitter, thank you. And the other two are up front, correct? That is correct. That seems about right. Okay. And the captain is currently heading down to a transporter room. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Just wanted to make sure that's where all the pieces were before I moved on and tried not to lose someone in the shuffle. Okay. Uh, I... Real quick, an idea just occurred to me. The station has station-wise hollow, hollow emitters, yeah? That is correct. Okay, this is probably reaching, but would it be something to say that I could set up a holographic representation of myself and pilot it from the runabout? Uh, that would be... Um, that would be a heck of a jury rig, because not there's no existing systems in place. Uh, Nia could assist, uh, but that would be a difficulty four engineering challenge. Mm. 
I mean, it's just something that occurred to me because, you know, chief of security, you don't want your captain to go see new people by himself. Generally, you want to be there with them. And even in a hologram state, it's something where they don't know you're a hologram and sometimes appearances are what's needed. Do better. Yep. Uh, I don't know. I mean, my control and my daring plus engineering isn't great. It's like a 12 or a 13. Uh, I don't know if people think this is worth it, though. Like, it's just an idea I had. Hey, we, well, we had a more considerable stockpile of momentum, but I say, you know, between the assist, between, I guess, whatever the runabout can do, or would the, would the runabout be assisting or would the station be assisting in this Ooh, case? Good. I would say whichever you want to assist can. I would say okay. definitely the station because the runabout yeah. has not rolled above or below a 10 this entire time. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so between that and with a bit of momentum, see the problem with it. Okay. Uh, so the station would assist with, uh, I would say, in your case, it would be a either computer security or computers engineering. Let's uh, just, as an argument, could this also be communications? Because I'm literally broadcasting my signal from the, uh, the runabout and it is being interpreted by the station. That way we use communications yep. for something. <laughs> <laughs> I guess yeah, that... that- that would work. Cool. All right. Oh, and if this succeeds, like if this Hail Mary succeeds, I want this to be standard protocol moving forward so that anybody can do this. <laughs> Obviously, it'll be a jury rig the first time, but you will hammer out a proper procedure and systems for future occasions. Yeah, we can work that out. Cool. All right. So, daring engineering. Mm-hmm. Uh, I don't think I have a focus unless you're going to give me shipboard tactical systems. <laughs> Not in this instance. Didn't think so. All right. Uh, unless people really want to keep the momentum, I'd like to spend all three of it, so I'm rolling 4d20. I'm okay with that. Well, with with the assist and the, uh, the station rolling, too, I think that, uh, like... Uh, well, the goal is to, to not only get the four successes, but by spending this much momentum to get that momentum right back. That's a good point. I hadn't thought of that. Yeah. Here's my question. Did you say it could be control engineering as well, or just daring? Uh, because this is such a rapid job, like Ember's trying to do this between the time it takes Captain Crawford to get from the bridge to a turbo lift down to the transporter room on deck two. Okay. So, yeah, this is definitely a daring. Um, maybe Nia could take the lead. His daring engineering's not much better. It's a 13 rather than a 12. But. Yeah, but do you have the focus, though, is the question. Uh, the closest one I probably have is computers, so probably not. No, not nah, let me, let's, let's let Ember take the lead, since this is her harebrained idea. Sure, and, uh, yeah, I'm down. Let's see what happens. No focus. Cool. Well, Ember apparently that doesn't is, need any help. That is, appara- that is four successes. But, uh, but, you know, let's, let's still roll the, the station and the assist, because momentum. Yeah. Uh, let, yeah. Let's just appreciate the irony if they do figure it out. It's like, yours is a bizarre species. You are progressive enough to include the likes of holograms, gesturing to Ember. <laughs> are you sure you can trust them? Yeah, there's there's oh, a lot of irony yes. here. There's there's layers of irony. And yeah. that is one success. So you get one momentum. So you've used all three momentum. So you just have one left. Yeah, just have the one. But hey, uh, as the captain's walking around, Hologram yep. Ember pops up. Okay, captain, you get... Uh, uh, so the, the captain's going, is anyone... Is Dalrum going, or is Dalrum staying on in ops? Uh, captain, what do you advise? I can go with you, or I can stay on ops in case they decide they're going to start firing. Uh, stay here at ops, and I'm Sorry. also going to bring... Uh, Ice along with Hollow Ember now. Uh, I'm also going to bring uh, Kumandura with me. Okay. A wise idea. So we are going to. So, Captain, just as you step out of the turbo lift on deck two, you are very surprised to see Ember uh, standing at attention right beside you. And she falls in beside you real quick in lockstep. 
kind of just... Huh. Are you actually here? Nope, still on the runabout, sir. Hmm. Very well. And he'll just keep walking. <laughs> Dora. Oh. There she is. All right. The three of you enter the transporter room, and the chief operating the room says, Ready, sir. All right. Energize. <clears throat> three pillars of light materialize into three armored forms. They are all wearing the same armor. And the first one at the lead removes his helmet. Captain, I am Kevit Charmal. And I am Captain Niles Crawford. Uh, welcome to Deep Space 15. Uh, he is a he stands about six foot tall and without the helmet on you realize that he is he shares more in physical stature with a Klingon than a human uh, he has a fairly high sloped forehead with cranial ridges uh, no hair to speak of and there is an odd pigment from the cranial ridges to either side of the head of a faded green color uh, his skin is a muted orange, and his eyes are heavy set. Uh, almost pitch black, really. Uh, he takes two steps forward, uh, bangs his chest twice, and the two uh, guard follow in quick succession, although they leave their helmets on. Captain, there is very little time. This derelict that you brought to your station was... We had left it adrift in order to be destroyed by that star. Your curiosity may have doomed you. We must proceed with its extermination. Hmm. Well, then let's discuss this in more, de eh, in more detail, gentlemen. Uh, or somewhere a little more, less uh, crammed, for lack of a better way of putting it. He makes a gesture as in, lead the way. Before uh, anyone goes anywhere, though, uh, Amber is going to speak up, kind of stepping between the two gentlemen and say, Chermal, it is my duty as station security to inform you that any and all weaponry are to remain here in the transporter room. This is your one and only chance to relinquish those weapons. I do not want to have a problem. He looks up at uh, Amber, and then he looks sort of cranes around your figure. Captain, do you guarantee the safety of my men uh, while on board this station? That I can. Very well. Havzak! He barks at his guards, and they ceremoniously pull out a... F um, they pull out two glass vials of something and set them very gingerly down on the transporter pad. Then they will also take out a fairly uh, heavy-looking blaster rifle out from where it's been slung over their shoulder, lay it down on the pad. As for Charmal, he pulls out a pistol, and he will gingerly place it on a console, hilt for, or handle first, and he'll pull out a dagger and repeat the same motion. Hmm. Satisfied. Well, if... I had more time, I would search you for a holdout, but I believe that is satisfactory. Yes, we may continue. All right. Now, while you guys are making your way to what I assume will be the conference room, uh, Galen, uh, we are going to quickly cut to uh, the infirmary where we are going to start looking at your... Uh, oh, that's the lunette sick bay. We don't want that. We are going to the station sick bay. Here. Hmm. Um, I'm just going to be looking at all the students because I've gathered them all up. Okay. So this is going to be the start of the extended task to figure out precisely what the heck these things are and how to properly cure them. 
Um, so this is going to be a work track 15 task. Uh, a difficulty of four with a resistance of two. So I will put that into chat. Uh, yeah. So you have um, uh, 10 medical students, as well as an anesthetologist is the... I'm just going to have a little pep talk with uh, the, the students. Go right ahead. Give us a pep talk. Uh, real quick, before we get any further, what is the magnitude on the extended task? Oh, did I forget the magnitude? Yep. Ah, my apologies. The magnitude is the number of breakthroughs needed, correct? Correct. Ah, in which case it will be a magnitude of four. Got it. Thank you. Thank you for reminding me. <clears throat> okay, sorry about that, Galen. Go ahead. All right. So uh, I'm just going to be smiling at them all as they all hold a little data pad. And I was like, welcome to your first day on the station, essentially. We're encountering something truly unique and fascinating, a fungal infection. We're going to identify, assess, and then possibly and hopefully make a cure. We have people who might be possibly infected, and we wish to make sure that that doesn't happen. So I encourage unorthodox thinking out-of-the-box ideas, and there are no stupid questions unless you really make a stupid question. So, let's get to it. Your anesthetologist, a Klingon by the name of Awal Katak, mumbles in Klingon something about achieving a great dishonor to be reporting to a hologram and a bunch of students. But that yeah, is under, the, under his breath. I wouldn't be able to hear that? Oh, you probably would hear it. Because he's, despite being an old Klingon, he's still Klingon. Go look at him and smile. He's like, sort of... Uh, he realizes you're looking at him and sort of straightens his, straightens his tunic and regards you with a cautious glare. My smile grows more. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so yeah, uh, let's see here. I just want to look at my talents. I got quick study. Would this uh, help reduce the difficulty? Uh, it would, yes. Uh, so. Quick study just uh, ignores nope. increased difficulty. Oh yeah, increased difficulty. And I've already set okay. the difficulty because anything under a, I found anything under a four for these types of tasks get broken extremely quickly. Okay. Uh... Ooh. And so the the two focuses still apply. Um, let's see. Yes, it would. All right. And do, 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 difficulty four. Mm. Uh, so it would be. How'd that work actually? So my purposeful hologram does that go against the pool needed to purchase another dice? Yes. Um, run that. Fine. Run. What does purposeful hologram do again? I forget. Or refresh my memory. Uh, you create with to perform a single task and are particularly adept at executing that function. When you attempt a task or uh, could apply two or more focuses, you may add an additional uh, may add may add a bonus d20 to your dice pool. Ah. Okay. So yeah, the bonus uh, the bonus d20 already counts as one. So if you want to add a second dice, you would have to spend two momentum. All right. Uh, I'm just. I'm, oh, so I'm gonna give. You, are you guys okay if I give him one moment, one momentum, one threat? Uh, I say go for it. I I never say no to more threat. <laughs> uh, I'll get an extra dice. I'm also gonna blow my determination. Okay. Um, uh, what value are you triggering? Uh, to never give up, even if there's the smallest chance. Okay. Um, Oh, that's a lot. <laughs> um, it's insight medicine, you said? Uh, insight or... medicine. Uh, insight or reason medicine, yes. They're all a 10. I'm, I'm, I'm even across the board pretty much. Okay. And Katok could assist if someone wants to roll for Katok. Or the station I... could assist. We'll, we'll have or. Katok do this. Okay. Sure. All right. uh, I assume 
infectious diseases as a focus? That would be a good focus, yes. All right. Oh, here's the roll. Yep. Oh, yes, focus. That is four successes from you and one from a wall or from Katok. So, yep, you beat that. So you get to roll uh, two challenge dice plus your medical. Uh, seven. Um, seven challenge dice then. And the resistance is two, so you need at least two to proceed. Uh, do you want to use a momentum to burn the resistance? I think that's a good idea in this case, yeah. Yeah. Right. yeah. Ooh. Now, so that is four, and I be- don't believe the one plus effect, the effect counts for anything in this case, does it? Do I get anything nope. since I'm in sick bay? Uh, yes, if question. you're in sick bay, your difficulty goes down by one. So technically, ah. you get another momentum, which you could either use to do one more work, or you could spend it to reroll those three zeros. Hmm. I say let's spend it for the reroll. Okay, All so right. reroll the three zeros. Oh wow! Okay, so that is a grand total of seven work. Uh, you burned the resistance, so you've that is enough for one breakthrough, if I remember my extended challenges well enough. Yep, yep. you've got it right. Yep. Uh, so the mute. Um, Looking at the few fungal spores that you have, uh, that you are uh, analysis uh, that are that you are analyzing, um, there are extremely mutatable. Um, you apply them in one, you apply one sort of cure to them, or you attempt to exterminate them, and it will work very quickly on some of them, but the other spores will develop a resistance really quickly. And as soon as one spore seems to either resist it due to random mutation or somehow or some other feature function you're not aware of, the entire remaining colony resists as well. Um, However, it is a very quick, it seems very, um, it's a very singular mutation. So you can apply one cure. It will kill off some, and then the rest will mutate to survive. But in doing so, they become uh, not what's the, become vulnerable to a previous cure that they had adapted to, at least in the early stages. Uh, so that brings the work track. So you have eight left, and I believe that's enough to bring the difficulty down by one. So it's now difficulty three. Work track. Mm-hmm. Uh, so again, difficulty two because he's in sick bay. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. Yeah, so now he's in sick bay. It's difficulty two for next rolls. So while we, while you are doing that, we are going to cut to the captain, and folks, uh, we're going to quickly jump to the shuttle bay or shuttle craft. Is there anything you guys wish to do in the shuttle? Okay. Well, as we are at like. I would like to try to scan around to see if there's any indication that any contaminants have been able to penetrate the force field or anything else of that nature. Okay. Um, that would uh, be... So you can either do a Insight Science Difficulty 3 or Insight Medical Difficulty 2. All right. Well, let's pull my sheet back up. I can certainly science with the best of them, but... that. <laughs> Medicine is actually garbage. So, yes, I'm going to... uh, You said insight? Correct. Okay. And I guess technically uh, I would be using a tricorder on this. um, A medical tricorder in like a small reachable kit of sorts that I could get. And if so, would that cut into difficulty at all for a... Well, I guess if, if I'm rolling science, that doesn't make sense. Yeah. Um, Medical okay. science don't do much for science, I'm afraid. Just okay. Kind of odd, really, but yeah. Well, would if not sensor operations, would xenobiology help me in this? Mm, I think sensor operations would be more applicable. All right, I will take yep. that then. And you can and... be assisted by uh, your co-pilot. 
if Ilya wants to roll. I'll go ahead and... Oop. So that is one success from you. I'm not doing too good. Okay. And you said it was, oh, oh. Yep. Oh. You said it was the same to... test for Ilya? Yep. Insight Science. Insight. Okay, uh, let's see. So two successes, and two successes. that, yeah, that's yeah, not enough. But so yeah, you, know, you believe that um, any of these fungal spores have not penetrated this force field. Okay, um, in that case, I'm going to tap on my communicator and hail the doctor, Lieutenant Barnett to Lieutenant Galen. Doctor here. I can't say conclusively, but based on my sensor analysis, I don't think that we've made it through the force fields, or rather that the contaminants have made it through the force fields. Uh, if that's the case, and if in your medical judgment you think that it would be safe to do so, I don't see any reason to keep Ensign Ilya over here. Ask more people than we need to. Due to the rapid evolving state of this infection, uh, this fungus, I would not like to take any risks. Uh, everyone on the shuttle will be sent to decontamination. Understood. Um, we can maneuver in when you are ready for us to do so, and uh, I guess I would know this in character, but in the meta I am not sure. It would it be like just an automatic beam into the decontamination or is there like a pathway set from the shuttle bay for us to uh i would say that the quarantine procedures on for station would be in place somehow um various uh, various personnel may have to be shunted around but um there would be uh, processes in place they probably haven't been fully tested yet on this particular station, but they would be available. Okay. So, as the, it, like, if I understand it, we would not be, or whatever quarantine procedure would not have us docking right away, essentially, or would have us, like, stay in the shuttle and then maybe beam over once sick bay is deemed it necessary unless like they need to conduct scans from decontamination that's that's what i'm trying to understand there we all stay right. self-contained here versus getting out of the station and even if we're in a decon chamber you know <laughs> risking the spread um yeah that would be the doctor's call if the doctor wants you to stay on the shuttle for the time being and in, in space or would you would the doctor allow you to enter right, that, uh, the shuttle bay. That's really up to the doctor. The back, the fungus was able to survive without oxygen and gravity, and no life support essentially, so they were basically exposed to uh, a shielded form of space. Would my study of them uh, let me know if they can survive space travel? Um, I was going to give you that information on your next breakthrough. Okay. So when we're ready to proceed with that, then when when I'm ready for the next set or the next test in this, then we'll you'll know for sure. So uh, let's cut to the conference room while those guys have their chat. <clears throat> All right. So <clears throat> um, Charmal. My apologies. <clears throat> nah, uh, Kevit Charmal. By now, you've come to understand that Kevit is a rank rather than a name. Mm -hmm. Would it be something equivalent to Captain in this case, or something a little lower? Um, judging from the way that his bodyguards act around him, it's most likely he's in a senior staff level position. Okay. And the way that he talks about his ship, it's most likely that he's a captain or something equivalent. 
Okay. He's... This is an impressive setup, Captain. We had known that you... that We had known that the cybernetic creatures stopped using this area of space about 30... about you know, 20-ish of our cycles ago. But we weren't sure the cause, and our ships were not... Well, we have our own challenges that prevent us from reaching this... exploring this nebula. We've seen your ships, and we were attempting to catch the one that's decided to drag this derelict to your ship, but our ships were not as fast as yours. I regret that we were unable to intercept before and deal with the problem sooner. Hmm. Now, you said that this infectious disease had very destructive capabilities. Do you have examples of such? Yes, Captain. Uh, it has uh, been a it has been a plague in our area of space for several years. We think that it may have ac accidentally been uh, been propagated by these cybernetic creatures. They were not not able to adapt to their inf the infection, and so acted as carriers uh, in a sort. Now, by cybernetic creatures, he's referring to the board. Yes, yes, he would be. Okay. The what we've what we know of it. Um, he has a he produces a small data pad, and he slides it across to uh, you and Dalrum. Hmm. It appears to attempt to interface with members of my uh, species, uh, any species brain patterns. We're not entirely sure why, but it seems to like to interfere with neural patterns. And eventually it will cause the host to... Sh he sort of pauses, he tries to find a good term. Short circuit. And enter a catatonic state from which they cannot be revived. Uh, we lost and We've had to resort to a... Counter a counter virus campaign, and ba wipe out all of our uh, wipe out our policy, or not wipe out not wipe out wipe out a population of a planet and then reseed it. That's why you may have noticed the lack of the head on the corpses of that crew of that ship. Huh. This is disturbing. Uh, I apologize for yeah. I apologize for not exactly leaving you sooner. Um, Captain Crawford to Doctor Galen. Doctor here. The you said they were called. I'm guessing obviously from the tokens are called the Vitars. The Vitars, yes. The Vitars. Uh. These new friends of ours, the Vitars, have sent me some interesting information about what might be happening. Uh, and I think it could aid in what you're doing down in sick bay. I'm sending the information to you now. Rami's voice just pipes up. I have transmitted the... I have already intercepted the data from the pad and have trans transmitted it to the doctor. Thank Rogers, you, Rami. Stand there for a second. I'm like... Interesting. I've already come to a couple of ideas and theories I wish to test. All right. And on and that subject, Doctor, if you can try your second extended task roll. Let's see here. So. Three dice. Focus. Um, nation's gone. <coughs> All right. Yeah. Okay. Uh, that is three successes, and I believe it was a me dif difficulty of two. Uh, can, and Focus that would be an additional success, thanks to Katok. So you have two momentum. And I believe that. Uh, so roll another seven challenge dice, please. One momentum for... Um... Resistance. 
Yes. Yep. Okay. Oh. Wow. That's six. That's nice. That brings the work track down to two left, I believe. And I, that will knock the difficulty down another degree. I would spend the momentum to reroll those two zeros, see if you can get the two that you need. Sure. That sounds good. Yeah. I'm down. Whoop. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, every now and then. But every now and then. Yeah. Statistically that Okay. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it is what it is. Okay, so uh let's see, where was I in the breakthroughs? Ah, yes. So you receive a couple new pieces of information from this. Uh the first is that the spores serve uh, the spores would survive in a vacuum by uh, coating, clumping themselves up among, or f- forming a shell of dead spores around them uh, t- to act as an additional buffer against the harshness of space and um, other, and the hazards of such space. Um, it's actually quite remarkable how they are able to replicate so quickly. It seems that they can use very little atmosphere or oxygen to uh, convert themselves into a uh, uh, convert them into just more cells. The only thing that you've seen that can breed as quickly would be uh, tribbles at an all-you-can-eat buffet. Uh, <laughs> thankfully, your tribble is hopefully sterile. <clears throat> or at least under a very controlled breeding program. They're under a controlled breeding program. Oh, yes. Um, um, I also should say that Katak refuses to go into your medical office. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there is a triple in my office. There is, yes. a, there is a... Uh, there is one there. Yes. Um, uh, let's see. Uh, so there's that. Um, it's and uh, what you, what you find is also quite interesting um, when you expose it to herds of creatures, is it will infect one or two of the creatures and then stop. Um, you can see, uh, as it begins to tap into their brains, it's trying to f- it's rather than forming rather than you know consuming or attempting to you know, destroy, as most viruses would. It seems to be attempting to form some sort of symbiotic relationship. Hmm. Um, I want to take a bunch of the tribbles I have that are meant for feeding purposes Mm -hmm. and expose them to it. Okay. Uh, Katok respectfully requests that due to uh, that he requests to be as far away from the screeching dribbles as possible. (laughs) Get a little nod and his duplicates will do the the deed. Okay. Uh, You expose them to the dribbles. Um, The ones that are still pregnant uh, will give birth as healthily as possible and are then quickly infected by more of these spores becoming more spore tribbles. Uh, once they replicate a... Uh, how would that work? Nope. The, they will continue to breed as a normal tribble would and only become infected after a successful birth. However, you see after three generations um, the spore the spores don't want to ass- not assimilate. Um, integrate themselves. In fact, the spore tribbles, and once they start touching, um, the spores begin to seep out of the creatures and try to form a, try to form a colony of sorts. Am I picking up any brainwave activities, like its own form of communication or anything like that? Um, tell you what, let's uh, roll another, let's just finish off the, um, extended task and we can uh, you can find out the rest oh okay 
Uh, let's see. So that would be difficulty of one now. So, uh, yes. So let's see. That, I believe, is the Italian flag. <laughs> nice. Uh, okay, so you have four successes, so that would be three momentum, and one critical. Do we want to buy all the momentum with the three we just got? So we're yes. down to one less. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Okay. So you're, um, are you, you're buying off the, the critical, or the failure? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay. So... Here is something interesting that happens. Um, one of their one of your med students. Um, it's their they're obviously very nervous around the sus the substance, and they drop their tricorder into it into the spores, and the oh, spores God. immediately start to um, interact with the tricorder. And one of the students has the idea of. A doctor, if this thing interacts so well with um, organic life, what would it do with a bioneural gel pack? Ooh, that's a very good question. Let's give it one and provide a tricorder with a translation matrix. Sorry. Uh, you rig the uh, students rig up a bio neuro gel pack connected to a tricorder drop it into the the one of the students has called it the mushroom pit for lack of a better term <laughs> <clears throat> the tricorder chirps to life within about 5 or 10 within about 5 minutes uh, the bio neuro gel pack turns green with the stuff as it multiplies in a way that you have never that you've yet to see and eventually the tricorder starts emitting um, uh, various tones Rami uh, immediately materializes in sickbay doctor this tricorder is attempting to interface with my systems lock it out let's leave it in an isolated system to see if it wants to communicate understood Uh, the tricorder uh, begins speaking in a very gradual or very grainy thing. It starts sounding more like a combination between a heavily auto-tuned singer and a fax modem. <laughs> but you are able to hear the words, greetings. Uh, Galen's gonna, like, move his leg a step back, but another duplicate of him is gonna walk back and move off to the side and simply raise the captain. Alright. Captain, your meeting has pretty much stalemated at the moment with the uh, Vitars. They're at, sure. They are uh, they are rather steadfast that extermination is the only way forward, and you are trying to find a more diplomatic solution that doesn't involve the Im potential immolation of your crew. Yeah. When all of a sudden, your combat chirps. And I'll kind of tap it. Uh, this is Crawford. Go ahead. This is a duplicate of Galen. I simply wish to convey that Galen has made contact and communication. With the disease? Affirmative. Hmm. Uh. Oh boy. When I've already remembered names. Uh, Charmal, I think was Charmal, named the yep. one. Yeah, uh, Charmal. If you would, would you want to communicate with this, or would you rather leave it to me? He. Uh, he sort of looks baffled. Why would you want to talk to a disease? Well, maybe we can figure out what it wants and find a way to get it to leave you alone, as it were. Things don't have to be solved with violence all the time. He scoffs. Captain, if you are wish to talk to this 
mushroom, I am more than willing to come by and laugh. Then by all means, you might be in for quite a show. If you please, and he'll leave. All right. Galen, so, going to yep. walk uh, through the force field into the room where the pile's at. And he's just going to sit down and cross his legs and tilt his head and smile. He's like, hello. Okay, so let's see who is going to be here. So I'm assuming the Ember hologram is going to appear. Oh, yeah. <laughs> okay. Ember, the captain. Actually, let's, while I get things ready, let's all take a quick 10 minute break. All righty. So I will see you guys Sounds back good. here at quarter after the hour. Sounds good. All righty.
Whew. All right. Welcome back, folks. So we return. Uh, so Captain Crawford enters sick enters the infirmary with Kevit Charmal, Master Chief Ember, and find Lieutenant Galen is sitting cross-legged in the decont in the uh, containment field or containment area, smiling at a biogel pack. If you ever seen Alien Covenant or Prometheus, that's the same smile he gives the Xenomorph. Mm. Oh. <laughs> uh, Galen, you said you established communication with this? Yes. And he'll look back and wait for the response to his hello. Greetings. Uh, this form is restrictive. Cannot grow or sense. Would you like a form like mine? Determine your form as photonic essence. Unable to duplicate. Request organic sample. You mean individual? Request organic form to replicate. Hmm. At that, all of the med students instinctively takes two steps back. Uh, hmm. You don't go to look to the captain? You're like, I have some tissue samples. I could possibly... Submit it to it and see what happens. Uh, yes, but maybe somewhere a little more. Well, is this the most contained space in Sick Bay? As far as I'm aware, yes. Sick Bay has its own power supply to maintain its own containment shielding, and if need be, it can be cut off from the rest of the station. Hmm. Uh. Um, Crawford's going to order all the students to leave. They do so very happily. Gala just waves at them. Does that include Katok? Uh, yeah, we'll say that includes Katok as well. Yeah, because he is technically a third-year med student. Yeah. It's the only um, one a token. I'll have to re fix that. Anyways. Charmal is basically making an expression that says, get a load of this. <laughs> uh, Galen's going to walk through uh, the window slash wall. Uh, um, this is the first time that Galen catches sight of Master Chief Ember, who has stationed herself by the door. This is going to raise an eyebrow. He's like, oh, interesting. How does my skin feel? And he just smiles. Your armband stinks. You never wash the fucking thing. <laughs> <laughs> I have you know I decontaminate nightly. Well, you're doing it wrong. Because it's what I'm using to basically transmit myself to the sickbay at the moment. I have an idea on how you can achieve this without using my armband. That's great. We, we, we should talk about this later. Right now, you should maybe throw a tribble into the fungal pool or whatever the hell you're calling it. No, I think it needs the DNA of a bipedal species. Ah! Well, hell, you've got mine on file. Give it give it some of mine. I'd rather have it be a peaceful creature. We're peaceful! I have counted your enemy's pieces across the battlefield. As I said, we were peaceful. Hmm. Captain, with your permission, I'd like to mix two different samples to give it a unique biological look. It's a uh, clone. The, and what would the, I guess, the two species you were looking at using be? Humanoid, since that's the variety of uh, most variety I have on file, I can randomize the genetic sequence to make a, hopefully, unique individual. We can't have another. Mushroom captain walking around. Uh, very well. Uh, proceed, Doctor. Just nod and he'll, uh, 
Gaiden's not shy about it. He'll just walk through a wall <laughs> into the lab. All right. And yeah, he'll um, pull up, uh, let's say, seven different genetic samples, uh, take little bits of them, and make a new composite. All right. <clears throat> you come up with something that is humanoid-shaped, but rather generic. Yeah. Um, the, the tissue synthesizer spits or 3D prints a tis tissue made of stem cells compatible with such a thing. You'll uh, take the vial and uh, go through the proper procedure of, you know, put it in one little thing, it gets scanned and secured and contained. You'll go through, take it out of its container, and then go on through to the room. And, um, Supply it to the mound. All right. <clears throat> the mound uh, slurps at it as a baby would a new, uh, a fresh bottle. And within, it takes about five minutes for it to fully integrate its data, for lack of a better term. And all of um, all of the spores from all of the triples and everything that was in the mushroom tank uh, begins to coalesce and multiply and grow as um, you are reading uh, spores are multiplying at very fast rates <clears throat> um, leaving uh, some of the triples to be completely uh, dead as, it's, as they've converted their proteins into more spores. However, it is within, after about 10 minutes or so, a humanoid thing stands before you. Uh, it has no obvious uh, eyes, nose, or mouth, but it does stand at about 5 foot 7. Uh, it has fungal vines slithering all through its bodies, trying to find a home. And eventually it uh, speaks and says, Greetings. We are the Togalau. Hello. I am Galen. Greetings, Galen. We have, uh, we have learned some data from the, and it points at the gel pack, that your language is simple, but effective. I had hoped that the programming would allow you to start to grasp of how we communicate, as we were unable to understand you. I'm assuming that's what you do, correct? We div we learn through failure, mutate and succeed. Strong spores grow the make the garden stronger. I have to ask you something simple, and I hope I can get an easy answer. Are you harmful? We do not wish to. We are as we do. Ah, the garden takes what it, only what it needs to thrive. From what I understand, your garden has taken individuals with lives. Defy. You, defy you, the life you speak of life as singular. Togalau does not understand that concept. You are in a larger universe. Your Togalau are singular to the rest of the universe, where everyone else is a singular individual. You may be connected among your species, but others are individuals, separate, their own personalities. You have taken those. You have harmed them and possibly led to their death. Do you understand that? If that is, if by our, if by our desire to 
strengthen the colony, we have inadvertently weakened another's garden. That is unintended and not a concept. It is a concept that is difficult to understand. If one can make amends, we could do so. But we, se we sense that we have, that this garden has strayed far from its other garden. Arts. Home garden? Well. Yes, home garden. There are individuals that do not know what to make of you. I will introduce you to them. But I will give you my word. I will do my best to keep you safe. As long as you do not harm anyone. We have no desire. We have reached a plateau of understanding. We do not believe the garden need be strengthened at this time. Excellent. And I'll be right back. And he'll just walk onto his wall. <laughs> um, it will attempt to follow you, and it will run smack dab comically into the wall. <laughs> he'll just poke back and like, no, no, it's something only I can do. Sorry. It then begins to sort of explore around, ru running up against the force field and realizing that it is trapped. It just sense it senses that it is a time for it to just... Captain? <laughs> Doctor? <clears throat> Doctor? Hello, I don't think I've caught in your name. I'm Kivit Charmal of the Vartars. How charming. I am here to exterminate the fungus before it infects your species and destroys everything that you hold dear. Well, I'm sorry to disappoint you. You will not be doing any exterminating. Uh, there has been a development, Captain. Then please show us. Uh, and he'll pull up on the screen. A uh, view screen of the creature and the conversation he just had with it. As you can see, it's an emergent life form. It's unique. There has been the idea of, of other species evolving to this. Uh, a good example was the nanites aboard the USS Enterprise D. Uh, I believe a young Wesley Crusher. Uh, gave birth to a civilization of nanomachines. This is a organic variation, it looks like. Hmm. They do not think um, like we do, unfortunately. They do not see an individual as we do. They were not bent on causing harm. They were simply reaching out and exploring. They did not know what they were doing. Hopefully, with this one here, we can teach them, and he can teach his rest of his species. But this and this, he said, garden. Do you think that's possibly like their version of a colony or a home world? Or I would like to think so. Translation between his words and the translated program. It's going to take some time to find everything correctly, but this is also a crude form of communications for him, I would assume. Or it. Hmm. Hmm. Captain, you cannot be think to communicate with this monstrosity. It should be eliminated. And it was my decree, it was by decree that this thing be wiped out from all space. I need. I wish to follow through with this. You're not going to be following through with it on this station. Captain, as much as I hate to be a voice of dissent and agreeing with our visitor, I would remind you that species like this in the past have turned out to not be exactly something we want to deal with, a.k.a. the Borg. <laughs> And unless you are willing to put a potential Borg outbreak on your conscience, you can consider this my official protest against any action that does not involve destruction, uh, destruction 
of the species. There's too much at risk here. I do have an idea on how to deal with them if they are a threat. But that information will be kept locked within my program, and I will delete myself if anyone attempts to get at it. Well, if you have a way of keeping them at bay, you should tell us. He will just look to Charmal. He was like, It is under my recommendation that this is an emergent species and a new life form. Under the prime directive of Starfleet, we are to offer assistance with them if they request an asylum. Doctor, I. Maybe you're not understanding what I'm saying. You're basically playing with fire here we know nothing of the species other than the fact that they have ravaged their way across uh charmok species space they have killed millions if not billions or trillions and you're content to just let them run i mean look at it this way let's say that you know everything works out and we send them on their merry way what are they going to do when they get to a new planet are they going to take over the entire ecosystem are they going to make copies of themselves and just replicate until we have, again, another Borg situation on our hand? I Maybe I'm the one not taking the crazy pills here, but this just seems, you know, even though we are Starfleet, we are supposed to see emergent life. It, am I the only one who sees the problem with this? Question in the meta, how open of a calm line is this? I, I think you at least yeah. hear Ember's one-sided yeah. conversation sure. yeah. as she pans right, yeah. to the back of the runabout. At, at, at this point, I would like to try and open a channel and like try to get in on this because I strongly object. Or Mark, uh, yeah, Lieutenant Sullivan Barnett would strongly object to everything. I yeah the uh, the terminal closest to the. Uh, to the door springs to life and Barnett's uh, mug appears on it. Okay. <laughs> so, Barnett. Captain? Doctor? I'm getting part of this conversation based on the hollow intermix uh, may... I... Actually, nine... With some sort of fungal based consciousness, perchance. <laughs> We're dealing with an emerging species of self awareness. Okay, well, I mean, that is enough for me, and if. Based on, the, or based on everything I've seen to this point, and. What I'm <laughs> gathering from what you just told me, and from what the Master Chief is ranting about. As I would like to put it uh, I would like to say one thing on this captain if you have no objection please first and foremost uh, I it's safe to say that it's the prerogative of any uh, of all sentient life to spread on an air uh, to spread on an ecosystem and to develop without that most sentient life as we understand it would not have reached that point and if there's some way to reach an equilibrium then so much the better uh, Ed we seen something very similar to this in the past Captain and the when we found out what we'd done or rather that we'd been interacting in a way that harmed a, uh, a sort of plant-based consciousness that existed we just did their own devices on a world and just stuck up warning beacons that seems like the clearest means possible particularly if we can locate their home world we might be able to look over the logs and determine the course that this ship has taken and if it's possible i might be able to determine uh all right, if this species actually, um, or if the Scorpi actually original homeworld, and if they did, then we could possibly return what samples we have to the planet so that it would be able to stay relatively unharmed. 
viable, hmm. most ethical option to take in this case, sir. And I actually concur with that. Uh, please, pour through the logs and see what you can find. My captain and GM, I can roll while they converse. Yep. Uh, <clears throat> the, um, the thing is, um, are you speaking, uh, can the fungus thing overhear this conversation? Um, no. Okay. Understood. Hmm. Okay. Uh, so quickly for Barnett, that would be a... Let's do a reason plus science um, with astrophysics or astronavigation type focuses. Astrometrics uh, work? Astrometrics would be perfect. Uh, that would be, if you're actually in astrometrics, it would be difficulty two, but as you're in a shuttle, that would be difficulty three. Yeah. Uh, that said, if I can get the station's assistance, yeah. um, I'll I'd flavor that as. station could assist. Okay. Uh, Lieutenant Sullivan Barnett to Cerberus. Rami, I'm going to share a set of computer logs here. I need you to help me search for any references we, you can to sites where, where this species may have possibly interacted with uh, this type of spore-based system. Life form. Understood. Preparing and to receive data. Okay, and real quick, would my uh, I have a focus in research? Would this help? This would be a good place for focus for that. Yes. Okay. Actually, I was already using astrometrics, so ah. it, it it works either way. Either or. <laughs> All okay. Right. So while they're doing that, hmm. oh no! Uh, no boy! Someone please roll the station. You do have one momentum. And I also have, uh, what do I have? What do I have? I have technical expertise, which it, since I've asked Rami to help, I may re-roll one of those D20s. Uh, okay. What's the roll for the station? Uh, roll for station would be computers plus science. All righty. This is the worst Right, well, it's not the worst possible roll. I could so, have gone with that. All right, so one you're that. Okay. Yep. There Ooh, we go. That's a good go. roll. Okay, so that's one mom that's three four successes, so you get one moment momentum from that. My hands play a little too fast across the console. I realize I've typed in the incorrect search parameters and backspace. Oh, that would have been embarrassing if I'd looked that up. Do not worry. I will not tell anyone. Uh, okay, back to the back to the infirmary. Um, Captain Crawford approaches the fungus, the Togalau thing, mm -hmm. on the other side of the containment field. Uh, other than the Togalau, do your people have? Wait, is the Toglau its name, or is it, like, the entire species? Yes. <laughs> yes, okay. <clears throat> we are Toglau. We have... no. This concept of individuality is... Xeno to, Xenos? Alien. Unfamiliar to us. Mm -hmm. y you are... Captain? The one in charge? Um, yes. Highest in the uh, hierarchy? Yes. My name is Captain Niles Crawford. Uh, where you are is a station known as Deep Space 15. We are our organization's uh, first expansion to this area of space. I have my Chief Science Officer doing some research and seeing if he can possibly find a way to send you home. Hmm. Yeah, we have a concept of home. The main garden. This, uh, yes, the garden. Uh, it 
we are uncertain how we got here, but instinctively can we can f this garden can find its way home. Um, I'm not sure if this is the right way to ask, but how are you feeling right now, your people? <laughs> this is, we do not understand the concept of feeling. We exist to learn hmm. and grow, but we do not wish harm. If we have harmed, we are, this garden is apologetic. Well, it seems that you can feel something. Uh, well, you're feeling of something known as regret. And we can <clears throat> teach you more about that if you wish. Uh, curious. <clears throat> We do wish to learn and bring knowledge back to the home garden. That might be this garden's purpose, is to learn and report back to the garden. In a way, you sound very much like uh, this station and what we consider our garden. Uh, called the Federation. Yes, your uh, it, your data package, as it points to the <clears throat> uh, fully consumed bioneural gel pack, contained information on Federation. Very basic, but informative. We wish. I wish I could. Or, sorry, we wish we could share data as effectively in return, but lack means of integration. Hmm. Well, we could certainly try to give you some information and maybe work on a way uh, between the man you had first contact with, our doctor, and maybe our chief engineer, and maybe we can find a way for you to integrate so you can properly share information with us. Mm. It, integrate the act of adding more to the garden. Captain, we believe that there are other Togalau left in the where you found this garden, we wish to claim it as it does so it it doesn't sprout another garden with different ideas. Hmm. That certainly seems reasonable. Uh, if you'll excuse me, and he'll go back over to is Galen in the main room in the center there, or is he outside of it? Uh, he's probably just looking at both Charmal and Ember right now, just kind of <clears throat> muddling his thoughts. And we were wow. privy to that conversation, yes? Yeah, I would say I mean, you guys yeah, were. It okay. would have been brought, probably broadcast. And then uh, when you come back, Captain Ember will just sort of open her hands right in a, a I told you so gesture and says... I don't think I need to say you, Captain, but it just said some very alarming things that confirmed all of my objections. <laughs> it simply wants to learn, just as we are, as we're here. It <clears throat> means no... I mean... We don't know anything about them at this point. To simply exterminate them without thoroughly doing research first, it wouldn't be fair to them. Let me uh, be a little bit more blunt than Captain. It specifically said two things. The first was that it was unknown and it was its purpose was to learn 
and that in order to prevent another individual garden, was the words I believed it used, to form with a different set of ideas, I think that's pretty clear that this could be very well an anomaly. This could be one of just one type of Togalau. We don't know that the rest of them will be like this. In fact, everything in that conversation tells me that there's a very distinct possibility that other Togalau could be completely different. We have no guarantee they're all going to be like this one. And again, it, this is something I was going to bring up later, but the fact that we've given it unfettered access to a bioneural gel pack and I wasn't informed is a huge breach of both Starfleet protocol and station security. Because we don't know what was on that gel pack. It could have security codes at this very moment and could literally walk out of this sick bay completely unable to be stopped. It was a spare gel pack that was kept in storage and only uploaded with the basis information of our programming for the translation matrix. Still, that is something that should have been run by me first as station security, because I have no guarantee that that was, as you say, what was on the gel pack. Ian's just going to smile. He's like, we do have multiple medical students that can vouch for that. Chief, I understand your point of view. You are in a position where you have to look at the worst for everything. Unfortunately, I did not share that point of view. I appreciate your input and concern, but I still stand by my recommendation that this is an emergent life form. And as per Starfleet guidelines and regulations, Prime Directive does come into play with this. And... If there are more of it back at this garden, maybe this one can act as a leader and some kind of an actor of change if we let it take its information and go back home. There might be some way we can ally ourselves with these people. We don't have to let them because become like the Borg if we help them. I will simply say this, because I can see that I'm not getting anywhere with anyone. It only takes one. One thing, one individual, one person, to change history. And by doing this, you're definitely shaping the fate of this quadrant. Make no mistake. Because I don't think I need to point it out, the Kevit here is not going to be very happy with you if you let this thing continue to exist. And I'm pretty sure, and of course, Charmal, you may speak for yourself... I'm pretty sure he's not going to let this happen. Like, I don't think he's going to let any part of this happen at all. Shamal, are there any of your people that are still infected with no. the... We no. Inc we incinerate the host as soon as we find it effective. They are then... They're then downloaded into the next host from their previous backup. Minimal loss of experience is, uh, is recorded. Oh, that's actually rather fascinating. But if you're worried about the colonies then falling to the spores or any of the fungus, would it not be better for resource-wise to simply have, if we can, uh, have the spores retreat all back move away he sits down and he's try he's try he's his face looks like a uh, eight-year-old trying to understand the concept of intelligent life other than his own I have to be honest with you captain and others We've never let this thing evolve past the infection stage. We saw what we saw that it was hamper what it was doing to the individuals, and determined that it was a simple sickness, much like anything else. That's how my people deal with uh, uh, weakness. 
as soon as someone becomes incapacitated, we if we disintegrate their current body and re-download them from their last available backup. If you don't have your backups, I'd simply say, why treat the cold when you can just shoot them? It's much quicker. But Precisely. That was not meant. Okay. No, we've saved billions of dollars in health care. Oh, you're based off of um, currency. How well, antiquated. It is. Yes. That if we, you are not. How do no. you get paid? Anyway, conversations for a different time. If you were able to, let's say, reclaim worlds or not have them spread any further, would that be beneficial for your government to leave them alone? If this thing can somehow prove that it is that it does not wish to harm and can even clean up the mess it has made, it would allow much of the planets in the Vatars Imperium to be reclaimed peacefully. However, if it is deceitful in any way, we shall incinerate it. If it is deceitful, I will release my findings and theories on how to cure the infection stage. Captain, I wish permission to address this thing. By all means. As long as you promise not to harm it. It's in the level 10 force field containment setting. Unless he really wants to get in there, I don't think he can. <laughs> All right. And in this case, while Kevin Charmall speaks to it, uh, he's also going to broadcast, uh, Crawford's also going to broadcast this conversation, at least so those of us in sickbay can hear it. Understood. <clears throat> you Togalau. We understand, my people understand you to be a disease, capable of nothing more than debilitating our most proud and honorable members of our society, causing a much harm to in, in the empire. Do you act, did you intend harm on our people? I cannot speak for other gardens. However, if the gardens are had my level of information, they would not have wished harm. If you come back with us, will you help our people and clean up your gardens and leave? We will leave. And if you provide us information as to your garden, we will not infest your garden, if you wish. Captain, I need to go and make a call back to the, Im to me, to the Imperator. I will return to my ship. By all means, Kevin. And without even asking for permission or escort, he will leave sick bay, pick up the two guards beside him, and um, unless someone is willing to escort him back, then we'll I'll, just move I'll that do time. it because I can see okay. that I was getting nowhere, so I I'll do it. Very well. <clears throat> okay. And you guys are off the station, leaving Galen and Crawford alone in sick bay, I believe, with the thing. Having fun, I Captain. I got her point of view, but I saw too much that we could learn for 
us to exterminate what was essentially, I'm not sure if I'm using the correct medical terms, an infant, life-wise. It was just starting to learn. Why should we stop that process? I will not lie, Captain, and... <laughs> Togalau entity reminds me a lot of myself when I first emerged. Originally, my first day being activated, I remember clearly. But wanting to be more, that came later. That came with understanding and growth. I didn't know exactly how I was created. I know it's a program. But the foundation of it is interesting. I have two fathers, essentially. The EMH from Voyager and James Moriarty from Enterprise-D. I wasn't supposed to find that out, but one of the designers let it slip. It was a concern of theirs that that program would become unstable and I would slip into what Ember fears. And I know our first experience, I joked about having my ethical subroutine disabled. But it's simply a guideline for me. That's what that became. It's similar to your consciousness. A little voice that tells you to do the right thing. It doesn't prevent me from bending the rules a bit. It allows me to adapt my programming. And to see the Togalau exhibit such curiosity made me think of myself. So I am glad that we're able to help. And as I said, if it does turn hostile, which I doubt it will, but if it ever does, you have my answer. Odd question. Do you have a I guess a rank in Starfleet, Doctor? I've been given the pips of a lieutenant, but the positioning of chief medical officer. Hmm. Until it is... Well deserved. Until it is determined if I'm actually a person through Starfleet, I am just acting lieutenant. But we'll see what the future brings. Maybe they'll give me a full-on commission. And I'll certainly be there to put in a good word. Look forward to it. Uh, we are going to cut quickly to the bridge. Or, not to the bridge, to Ops, where Mr. Dalrum is currently manning with Mr. Pinnack. Darval? Uh, not, yeah, Mr. <laughs> Darval, not Pinnack. I'm thinking <laughs> of the wrong system. <laughs> <laughs> uh, wrong game. Wrong game. Okay. Uh, Dalrum, <clears throat> it's been about 10 minutes since uh, Charmal has beamed back to his ship, and you have seen uh, the, sh the ship has departed for the exit of the nebula, where it can make a call uh, far quicker than, or far without as much interference. <clears throat> uh, Lieutenant Darval, hmm. Commander Dalrum. We are receiving a hail from the Vitaris vessel. On screen, Lieutenant. Yes, sir. Uh, Kivit Charmal once again appears on the hollow emitter. Hmm. Commander, I have spoken with the Im Imperator. It has agreed to bring this Togalau back to our space so that it can clean up the mess it has made. We have the Vitaris' word that we will not harm this creature, these creatures, whatever, until unless they prove to be deceitful. Understood. I will uh, transmit that message down to my captain in sickbay and will be in contact with you to transport the uh, organism. Commander. Uh, perhaps you should have it transferred by that shuttle that has been infected. 
we could use it as, as a test run to see whether this creature's uh, intentions are what it claims. I will pass that information along. Thank you, Kivet. Good day. And then the communication ceases. Commander Dolrum down to sickbay. Go ahead, Commander. We just got word that um, our friend has been given safe passage to help clean up the mess. That's certainly good to hear. Uh, Was there anything else other than that? Uh, The uh, Kivit made a decently good point of setting our Togolau um, onto the shuttle, have him decontaminate that, see if his intentions are true. Certainly seems like a good show of faith, as it were. Captain, uh, I suggest he would do the Federation shuttle, make sure that the away team is defungused, and then have him go back to the alien shuttle. That certainly seems like a good plan to me. Makes uh, the most logical sense. Yeah. And Captain Crawford will uh, walk over to the containment field where the Togolau is. Um, it seems like the Kevit has given you permission to come back with them and clean up the other Togolau. But before we can have that happen, we have to have you test something for, it, for us first. If that's okay with you. I understand. Well, sorry. We understand. Certainly. Um, Doctor, is there any way to say, give this Togolau a personal containment field so it doesn't affect anything on the way out? Well, Togolau, are you able to contain your spores within your own entity? Making sure that they do not infect or come in contact with anything? Correct. This can be done. The garden will not spread at this time. I guess I guess looking at the floor where the Togolau is in the containment field, does it look like it's spread at all? Uh, the only thing that has reproduced during this time is the Tribbles. <laughs> Alrighty. Uh, Katok is literally terrified. Yeah, I'm sure. <clears throat> Are you able to cleanse the tribbles of any spores? There are no garden. This garden is whole. There are no garden. There are no other gardens here. And Galen will go and confirm his scans. All right. Um, Normally, this close to the end of session, that would be a zero task, so I'll just give it to you. Yeah, there are no fungal spores present that are not already part of this creature. Okay. Galen will uh, look at the captain like, so far, so good. All right. Uh, let's drop the containment field, and I guess we'll take it as it goes. Uh, the force field drops, and it takes a couple tentative shuffling steps forward as it gets used to moving in this bipedal form. Slowly but steadily, it gains momentum as it starts catching up to um, Galen and the captain. Uh, Galen's going to hand him a pad. It'll be double-checked to make sure it's just information on there from what Galen writes. Mm-hmm. And he's going to hand it to uh, Togolau. Okay. This is a communication frequency, which you can reach me by. This is the relay for the communication buoy we have set up outside of the nebula. I would like to keep in contact with you as often as possible. These numbers and terms are unfamiliar. However, we will learn. And when we learn what these terms are and how to use them, we will remember. I look forward to hearing from you. 
Uh, it it has been an interesting experience. I we hope to encounter you again. Make it a promise, and I will look look forward to it. Question: How do we get from here to shuttle? Oh, uh, do you think it'll be fun with matter matter transmission and conversion? It is an unfamiliar process. We will adapt. Well, let's attempt it. All right. This, um, is how, this is how this thing dies. Just for fun. <laughs> We're going uh, to a transporter pad. <laughs> <laughs> that makes sense. All right, you head to the nearest transporter pad. Um, I'm having it's... Rami scan every step we take to make sure everything is cleansed and cleared. Yep, uh, Rami, in... Rami ensures that there are no spores. And M... Uh, Master Chief Ember comes back just to make sure that this thing stays behaved. As along with a couple other security officers wielding compression rifles. He only just look to her and smile like, you're right, it only does take just one. The wa um ever since the um the last couple days, the station is far busier than you recall it ever being before. Um, as you wander through the boulevard to the nearest uh, um, transport system, uh, the first of the shops are going up, including a, a, a restaurant named, named as the Eclipse, hmm. as well as a clothing shop and several other small convenience and entertainment modules. All of them, sort all of the people just sort of pause and stare just briefly as the Togala walks past, and then return to the normal. It's like, well, this is Starfleet. Weirdness happens. Uh, you reach the transporter bad, and um, you you are beaming to the runabout. I think that was the plan. Yeah. All yeah. right. So I believe that is a. Ah, uh, I believe that is a control plus engineering. With, uh, from pad to pad is a difficulty two, I believe, and the ships can assist with computers hmm. engineering, I believe. Sensors, because advanced sensors, sensors thank you. is broken yep. as all hell. <laughs> yes, it is. <laughs> Does the station have advanced sensors? I think I gave it to it because that's kind of what you need in this bloody soup. I know the lunette has it because reasons. Reasons. It does. Uh, as far as I'm looking, it doesn't. Uh, nope, it does not actually. Hmm. Yep, the lunette has um, increased sensors, but the station does not. Odd. All right. Hmm. Hasn't been installed yet. <laughs> Give it time. <laughs> we'll get there. Indeed. Never All right. Next Tuesday is. <laughs> All right, uh, make your rolls, please. Um, we don't have a transporter chief, so let's just use Nia, I guess. Yeah, Nia can do that. All right. And you said it was difficulty difficulty two. two. Yep. Well, since we still have momentum. Use one to buy dice, because I don't want to risk us killing this thing as we train. Um, Very well. He gets transferred to the mirror universe instead. <laughs> we are the Togalau. You will be assimilated. <laughs> Resistance is futile. Yeah, mirror Togalau are the board. So this is this is going to be fine. It's going to be fine. I do not have here. Well, that's three successes. Huzzah. All right. And uh, does somebody want to roll for the station? I can do that. What is the station going to roll? Uh, sensors engineering. Uh, 
And that's another success. Mm -hmm. So two momentum. Uh, Doctor, you watched the Togolau um, dematerialize completely. No spores left behind. Uh, doctor, or not Doctor, um, Mr. Barnett, or Sullivan Barnett, there is a small hum as the Danube, or as the uh, shuttle's transporter pad activates, and the Togolau materializes. Uh, Going it. Marcus will stand up from his console. <laughs> um, apologies are in order, I we believe. We are the Togolau, and we believe that we have left some gardens behind. It does a... Um, unless anyone interferes with its movements, it's going to make a quick figure eight um, motion through the cab, uh, lightly brushing the EV suits of both Ember, uh, Naya, and a quick brush over the uh, mobile emitter of the do of the doctor. We have collected all gardens from this vessel. There are no further Togolau gardens present. In that case, uh, I see no reason not to be friendly, and I'm going to drop the force field around the cockpit. You fell for his trap card. <laughs> oh no. I'm still in an EV suit. Yeah. There, we had. Are you your captain mentioned another vessel that should be cleansed? Uh yes. The the Scorpi ship that we found you on, or the beginnings of you, the spores. I suppose I'm not sure how much. Well, there's probably some of you left on that. Um, I can arrange a quick transport, or... Well, we. I wonder if we might be able to latch on properly. Uh, let's see. Nia, can you come up here for a moment? Assuming uh, someone still want... Uh, someone is still playing... Yeah, is... Specialist Nia. Nia was the Afrosha, Captain. correct? No. Uh, no, no, that's, that's the, ah, that's the human the or the trail. Yeah, that's the trail. Our trail friend. Yes. All right. I'm sorry, uh, I'm I, going off of it. What is he doing? Specialist, uh, I want to get your opinion. Uh, do you think that we can lock the, or do you think that we could interlock the um, top of the runabout to a well? No, we don't want to open the. Or we don't want to try and establish a connection by airlock because that ship has holes in it. Sorry, it's been a long day, and I've just been sitting here for a little while. Um, we'll we'll beam you right from the just right from the pad back over to the ship, and you can collect your gardens, as it were. Mm. Hmm. Understood. Okay, so you are beaming from a pad to a not pad, so that would now be difficulty three. Oh boy hand on this or maybe actually I should give you a hand All right. I think that you have the better engineering stat yes you do have yeah. the better engineering stats yeah and the runabout can assist let's say let's say that it should roll under a nine okay. uh, and um, you said it was difficulty what one difficulty one three time? yeah oh, um, glad that's not a I 20 uh, I think I'm going to go ahead and burn the rest of our momentum to buy two more dice. Okay. I forget. To assist, am I just rolling one dice or two? One dice for assist. Right. That was what I thought, but I did not remember. <laughs> um, okay, that's two successes. Okay, uh, no applicable focuses unless xenobiology applies somehow. I'll let it slide this time just because they are weird. Fair enough. And there's a hey. Okay. <clears throat> uh, it materializes successfully on the ship. Um, it's interesting that you didn't decide to check to see if the uh, how it would deal with, you know, a vacuum. 
Um, but uh, it spasms very. Uh, it spasms for about three seconds before your sensors indicate that it begins moving around again. It seems to be moving in a fairly methodical back and forth pattern. And hmm. it isn't about ten minutes later. Um, you are so busy focused on the sensors. Um, you see it float past the on the winch. You ah, you see it float past the windshield as it grabs on and sort of knocks on the windshield of your shuttle. I think we have someone that wants to come for dinner. I'd better. We'd better beam them. Well. Uh, yeah, I don't believe shuttles are equipped with airlocks. I know runabouts are. Uh, runabouts are. Yeah. Um, tell you what. Yeah, we are running a ru we are running a ru not a shuttle. Yes. So runabouts have airlocks. Okay. Is it? I forget. Is there like an intermediate system between the between the airlock and that, or is it a door that would slide and we would need to pull the atmosphere into like mm -hmm. a tanks, basically? It would be a. It would be a two-stage airlock, so outer door opens, outer door closes, repressurize, inner door opens. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I'll go ahead, open an outer door, and gesture. What? Once again, like, not even talking, just moving hands elaborately. Say, yeah. that way. It seems to understand. There's a hiss of the airlock as... It cycles, and the Togalau steps in. We have completed the... We have completed integrating the gardens of both vessels into ourselves. Not many spores had survived, but those that we gathered into, uh, shared their experiences. In that case, we'll, we can get you back aboard. I... Yeah, that that's my thinking on this. I'm sorry, it is terribly fascinating to meet you. Likewise. And uh, are you heading back to the station, or are you going to take it straight to the Vitar's ship? I'm going to consult with the CO on that one. Um, All right. Lieutenant Sullivan Barnett to uh, Cerberus. Uh, this is Captain Crawford. Go ahead, Lieutenant. Captain, uh, we've completed recovery of all spores with the Togolau on both the shuttle and the um, Scorpi vessel. Uh, we have to make a final check through, or we can make a final check through, of course, as far as internal scans go, but uh, pending that, I'd say that we're all in the clear. Um, where would you like the shuttle to go next? Um, go ahead and come on back to the station. We'll beam our Togolau friend onto the guitar <clears throat> ship from here. Hi, sir. All right. I, just for insurance purposes, uh, I can conduct a very quiet scan if nobody has any objections. Go for it. It will be a difficulty uh, that will be insight science uh, difficulty of one. All right. And, uh, sensor operations. Mm -hmm. And I just made. Yeah. You uh, you confirm your you confirm your suspicion that there are no uh, stray spores left on board the runabout or the Scorpi vessel. All right, then, as I note those results, I pilot us back to the station. All right. It's been roughly about 15 hours out of game time that you've been stuck in this cockpit. Uh, so I'm willing to bet even the slightly unstable surface of the station provides a little bit of relief to you. It's It's like dry land after being uh, on a boat for 
hours. <laughs> I know that feeling. Fun. All right. Um, yeah, there is the cursory, t- um, t- cursory greeting of the Togalau before it's shuffled off to the Vatars vessel. Uh, anyone wish to have any scenes before it leaves the station? Uh, I had my scene with it with the little data pad. I'm good. I'm good as well. All right. So the Togalau bids you all farewell and wishes wishes that this garden could interact with you once more in the in a time that is uh, far less confusing for both. And it materializes under armed escort, onto the Vitars vessel. Uh, the Vitars vessel, as thanks, will beam a bit of astrometrics data to the station, indicating the current borders of the Vitars empire, as well as several stars and locations that are near the station. <clears throat> Before leaving the nebula and departing for what you assume to be its homeworld. Um, now, does anybody have any scenes they wish to play before I we wrap up with a couple small scenes? Well, I think that the doctor wanted to see me a little bit earlier, or before we headed off here. Um, okay. <clears throat> yes. So, we have the, doc- the doctor and the scientist. Is this going to be in sickbay? Yeah. I believe he wanted me to report to sickbay. Okay. Yeah, one of his duplicates will be taking the tribbles and putting them back into their confined stasis after you know, thorough examination, and then some of them will be used for feeding for some of the creatures he has. But uh, yeah, the main Galen, Galen Prime, will uh, uh, be waiting for Barnett. Barnett will step through. Um, in spite of having been up for a, or been a in spite of having been awake for a considerable amount of time, he will seem a bit more energized than at the meeting prior. Lieutenant, how are you feeling today? Uh, a little bit woozy still. I, I don't know what to tell you on this, Doc. I think that some of those... Uh, I think some of the anti-nausea stuff is wearing off. I don't know like if I'm developing a tolerance or whatnot. But I can say at least that I'm starting to get my sea legs a bit, at least on the station. Uh, the inertial dampeners here are just a little bit better, and 15 hours in a shuttle, you kind of appreciate that a little bit. Uh, you appreciate that a little more. Other well, than that... Go ahead. Uh, yeah, other than that, good. Just get a program my proper cup of coffee in before the Master Chief has me run another uh, new decks. Well, I have some good news and bad news. Which would you like first? Oh. <laughs> oh. I'm, I'm a rep of the Band-Aid kind of guy, so give it to me straight, Doc. The shots I've been What's giving you have been nothing but placebos. You've been slowly gained better on your own merit. Congratulations. And the good news? The good news is he's going to hand you a pad. These are orders for Chief Ember to stop drilling you so hard constantly. You will still have your workout routine with her on a couple of days, but you are required to rest at least a minimum eight hours. Until you get a proper sleep schedule and you're not so tired during meetings. All right. That's the good news. Well, ish. Doctor, one question. Mm hmm. Your program, it runs self diagnostics. Would that be correct? Why do you ask? I'm just curious about the frequency of how often your ethical subroutine goes off. As frequently as a human's consciousness. Right. Well, I, uh, 
<laughs> Mr. Chief is uh, probably off on that one, too. <laughs> anyway. Uh, appreciate it. And wave of the pad. Um, Bernard says, so if you'll excuse me, I'm off to astrometrics. I got some work to do. <laughs> And I do mean eight hours of sleep. That is an order. He he turns and just smiles and gives a genuous nod before turning and walking out the door. He'll just smile and look around like, Rami, please keep an eye on him for me when you can. Of course, Doctor. I shall inform you if he does not follow the sleep patterns. Excellent. Please note Thank you. that this is a... Please note that I am... Bah. Please note that such surveillance is, should only be used for proper medical procedures and should not be used for stalking, as others have attempted to use me for. Others? Please identify. Why, well, yes. Then. And she'll list off a bunch of uh, names... Mostly um, people trying to find, uh, figure out where their wives, husbands, uh, spouses may be. However, as none of them have uh, command clearance, um, they such requests were denied. If there's repeat requests from individuals, please notify me and we'll schedule a counseling appointment with them. Absolutely. And only monitor Barnett as he's on active duty. As long as he stays active, keep an eye. At the moment he's off duty, no need to monitor him. I understand. Modifying parameters as requested. Okay. And she winks out of existence. Okay. Yeah, we'll do the same. He'll he'll turn himself off. All right. Um, now I believe that the captain had requested a um, session in his ready room with Eral. Correct. Uh, yes, actually, yeah. Okay, so, yeah. uh, during all of this fun time, um, a response has come back from the USS Foundation. It is text Ooh, only bro. from Captain Jake. Uh, Captain Jacobs, I believe, was his name. Yep. What uh, does it so say? We are moving to the captain's office. Basically, it says that um, Ensign Ural, while intelligence has proven very difficult to supervise effectively as she keeps sticking her beak in duties where uh, which were not hers within her wheelhouse. Um, mm -hmm. If she, if you believe that you can get more out of her on your station, you are more than welcome to keep her. Otherwise, you may transfer her back to the, to the uh, Federation space for disciplinary action or Discipline, ah, disciplinary action or reassignment. Alrighty. So, we are here. Uh, there is the chime at the door. Enter. Ural steps for, steps in. Um, her uniform has not been changed from her duty, duty shift, where she is, you're not entirely sure where she's been, but it's been a messy one. Mm -hmm. Captain, you wish to see me. Yes, sir. Uh, please sit down. And she'll head to the chair and uh, unfurl her wings, sit down, and then furl the wings over the chair. Uh, she's very nervous, as you can see. Now, I received this response from your commanding officer. And he'll either, you know, like, read it out or just slide the, simply slide the data pad over and let her read it. Mm-hmm. And she'll, she'll nod, yeah. Yes. I admit that my attention span is more... is a bit short, and I would much rather be doing things that interest me like working on the science equipment rather than cleaning out a plas or re ah, installing a plasma manifold on deck 13G. Hmm. So you say you're essentially more fitted for maintenance is what you're telling me. Sir, my well, expertise is in me. 
My expertise is in maintenance only because that is where Starfleet assigned me. I would much rather be maintaining I would much rather be maintaining the science equipment. Perhaps specialty and then also, maintenance. And then maybe also use it so you can expand your horizons, as it were. Uh, she perks up a bit and nods. Yes? Um, weird question. Is she just wearing, like, the, uh, the ops yellow? Uh, yeah, ops yellow. Okay. Um, and another out-of-game question. How far is the Foundation from here? Or at least Federation space? Um, the Foundation would have, tr uh, is heading to Deep Space 16, which is further into the Alpha Quadrant, so it's even farther from Federation space than you are. Okay. Hmm. Well, it seems like your specialty is something we could use around here. And it'll kind of rummage around uh, for a bit under his desk. And he will pull out a, a science blue uniform. Uh, it took a bit to get it fitted for the score anatomy, but this is handmade. Uh, she coos a bit as she looks it up and down, and she'll gingerly reach out to grab it. So I can stay? Yes, and should you find yourself of use to the station, you may even earn a promotion. Sure. Uh, she uh, spreads her wings in joy and looks almost ready to flap them, but then realizes that she's in a very tight space, and that would not be a good idea. Yeah, probably not. Uh, thank you, sir. Thank you. I won't let you down, sir. Hmm. Now, I believe that, actually, computer, uh, or Rami, I guess, in this case, uh, yes, what is the current location of one Lieutenant Sullivan Barnett? Lieutenant Sullivan Barnett is currently located in the Astrometrics and Stellar Cartography Lab. Hmm. I'll make that your first assignment, Ensign Errol. Welcome to Server Station. Thank you, sir. Permission to explore my new, um, my new lab, my new assignment, sir. Of course. Uh, just keep the uniform clean. Yes, sir. I'll change immediately, sir. <laughs> and she will, as she, uh, she doesn't wait for being dismissed. She'll just run straight out full of eagerness. Uh, she'll do a, uh, ops is briefly disrupted as a score takes flight from the center or from the second story of the f of ops. Do a, does a couple quick uh, loop de loops and heads to the nearest turbo lift. You hear Dolrum yell, Errol! <laughs> uh, and just can you note to himself, he's like, I'm starting to like it here. <laughs> Captain, uh, Rami's voice po pokes over. Captain. The last, yes, of the, the last of the tra of the passengers from the USS Amara have just disembarked. One has particularly unique transfer orders and is immediately... I have taken the liberty of summoning Master Chief Ember to you as well as this is going to be an interesting chat. Of course, uh, please. You will, find the, you will find the transfer order on your computer screen, sir. And he'll go ahead and pull that up. Uh, it is an officer transfer request, mm -hmm. but from the Department of Interspe uh, Interspecies Relations, which has, in the past, mm -hmm. done officer transfer programs. Right. Um, this one is from the Breen. And mm. I have his character token here, somewhere. Almost as if on cue, your door chime arrives, or your door chimes. Enter. 
And out oh, if I moved him to the right layer, that would be a little easier. And I'm going to let Galen run this because this is his idea. Oh, all right. So it's a big brain. Yeah. <clears throat> Walks in, looks at the chair, grabs it, and just drags it across the floor. And then sit down. Is now, uh, Chief I, Ember here? I'm in I'm... the quarter, standing there menacingly. The ringing looks look to her and to the captain. Tilt his head ever so slightly. Hello, um... Saw your transfer orders here, uh... Do they have Sorry. a name on the transfer I'm, order? Yes, and I'm about to show it to you. Okay. There you go. My call, Jen Zing. Okay. Now, um, um, I, I should bring a note just so that everyone is brought up to speed with the nature of the Breen. Um, it's been well known... It was at one point thought that Starf that the Breen were a singular species and wore their harsh environmental suits to protect from environment that wasn't their homeworld, which was presumed to be cold. Um, thanks to Starfleet intelligence and some actions done during the early years of the Typhon Pact in nineteen or in twenty three eighty five eighty six, it's been dis discovered that the Breen actually used these suits as a form of um, uh, prejudice removal. The Breen Confederacy is actually a fairly diverse set of species, but they wear these suits to anonymize species and gender to eliminate favoritism and nepotism amongst them so that one can only be advanced through merit alone. Hmm. Anyways, uh, exposition out of the way. Please continue. Now... Uh, looking at the name, uh, Jensen, uh, is there a specific reason that you wanted to come aboard Deep Space 15? I serve as military attaché for the diplomats of the Typhon Pact, specifically the Breen. We have an agreement that you are to share information and of discoveries within two days' time. I am here to ensure that no sabotage, subterfuge, or deceit is made on those reports. Hmm. On missions, I will serve you and fight for you. Off mission, my interests are to the Typhon Pact, and the brain specifically. And you're saying my name wrong. No. Oh, please, correct me. He's just going to reach up and pull off his helmet. Like, it's Michael Jensen. Ember just face palms and just starts <laughs> banging her head against the nearest thing. Like, god damn it. <laughs> Going to have to update that token now, aren't I? Oh, I got I can do it. Okay. <laughs> oh my god, okay. Whew. You Sorry. let this happen, Captain. This is on you. <laughs> you uh, let him <laughs> here. Uh, for those not aware, um, in ELH's game, there's a character named Jensen whose sole purpose is to annoy the hell out of the doctors. Hi. Yeah. <laughs> Whether or not this and... character is the same, we will find out. But, yeah, so please, describe uh, this character. Uh, he is roughly in his late 30s, early 40s. Uh, clean shaven, just like his token there. And he has just, he's a human. He just looks okay. clearly disgusted looking at you, Captain. He looks to Ember, his face goes neutral, but he looks back to you and he has that contempt look. Like he's just having to fight his emotions. Hmm. Well, welcome to Deep Space 15, Mr. Jensen. Yeah, uh -huh. Mr. Jensen's not going to cut it. You can just call me Grelick Jensen. Then Grelick Jensen it is. All oh, right, uh, Grelick is the rank. Yep, Grelick, yep. Yeah, I looked at the character sheet and saw, so we're good in that regard. Mm-hmm. 
And just before your doctors get a chance to poke and prod at me, I'm an augment from the eugenics war. So, hmm. I want these reports to be accurate, and I'll be making sure they are. If they're not, the Breen Confederacy will be very upset. And I'm sure Starfleet doesn't want another incident to happen. We certainly don't. Good. As I said, on mission, you can order me around. I'll follow your orders. The moment I'm off, if I don't like your orders, I'll tell you. It certainly seems more than fair. Now, the station's new, it should have a bar. We're going to go get drunk. Um, I'll certainly join you for some drinks, but I'm not sure if I'm going to become <laughs> intoxicated. I don't want to drink with a normal human. Not after what your kind's done. Looking forward to taking your orders, sir. And I look forward to lurking with you, Grelick. Uh, if you have no other questions for me, uh, feel free. He'll just, before you could finish, he'll just get up and leave. Alrighty. So, Captain, now that he's gone, I think we need to have a very frank discussion <laughs> about protocol. <laughs> Not only with apparently human augments coming on board, but with gel packs being handed out like candy. I, I just want to be clear, sir. Am I still head of station security, or should I file my resignation now? <sighs> Jesus. Um, <laughs> this is a lot being thrown at me at once. <laughs> I'll inter you're still chief of station security, but I agree with what you said about Dr. Galen giving a gel pack out like nothing, even if it is minimal information as he promises. Oh. We'll have a talk later. It's... <laughs> Do we lose him? I'm sorry? No, I, I still hear him. Yeah, I still hear him. Okay, cool, cool. Did I cut out for you? Oh, and... Okay. Hi, Galen. Oh. Hi, Galen. Hi, oh. I think we've lost Galen. Rip. Oh, no. Rip. Oh, well, uh, we're about ending the session anyways. And this sounds like a good place to end it. Yeah, I was saying that awkward, yeah. like, ah. Uh, yeah, that's exactly where we end it. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. So thank you all for as a, what I think is a successful second session. Yeah. Um, if all goes well, I'm going to start experimenting with streaming next week or next session. Which hey. Will, I believe the 31st of May yep. at 6 p.m. Pacific. Yeah. So it should be good. So excellent. So thank you, everyone. Uh, it's been fun, and I'll see you guys next time. What I miss? Oh, we can just, and uh, we can end the session or end recording. Yeah.